last week struggled a little bit with the Paladin. This week learned his lesson. No Paladin. He's got Warlock <laughs> and Warrior instead. I believe we're going to be getting to the first game in just a second here. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to see how it's going to turn around. Team Celestial really needs a win. Because only yeah. one team is truly eliminated after the regular season finishes. And mm -hmm. Team Celestial currently sitting there unopposed at 8th place. Oh, wow. Paladin against Warrior. I think Trump is... Wait, is it going to be a control Warrior or a, or a Patreon? Because I think Trump might be one of the players who, who might bring the control version. If, if, he, if he brought the control deck, he, he's up against it here. Like, Paladin... It's a horrible matchup, if that's the case. But if he's playing the patrons, he should be just fine. Yeah. <laughs> what if he's playing the Dragon Warrior? <laughs> dragon I mean, Warrior? Yeah, it's well, been picking also, up a little bit of... pretty bad against Paladin. Yeah, it's the same thing as Control, basically, except a little worse in that specific matchup. Yeah, the reason why it's so bad, why the Control Warrior is so bad against Paladin is the way that the, the hero powers line up. Warrior can't easily clear the 1-1s one with, <laughs> with the armor up. So those are those are eventually gonna stack up, and it's hard to keep keep them at bay. Yep, absolutely. We'll see how it ends up uh, doing because the mid range paladin is capable of curving out very powerfully, um, overwhelming the hand, like, Wow! Yeah, well, this, this is excellent. Maybe just a muster for battle and allows it to be really powerful, and hoping that your opponent doesn't have whirlwind. But even then. Um, there's still ways for you to be really good to pressure the the warrior because I've been seeing some mid-range shaman decks hit the top ends of legend recently and i always ask the, the same question like how do you beat a patron warrior that seems to dominate you and the, the answer is the same just make sure to be really aggressive early on pressure a ton and just watch them crumble because you know they have to use weapons to clear and then they're double dipping damage and you can just push them out of the game yeah, yeah like that's the theory i've been playing a bunch of different shaman decks in the, the past couple of days trying to get my golden shaman which i finally got today and I yeah. struggled. Like, I I didn't find a way. Like Mech Shaman was the only version that I was able to beat patrons with. Consistently, yeah. right? Well, not consistently, but like in general, like <laughs> to have a chance. Really, I, I really thought that maybe it's pretty good against the um, because it's like I feel like Mech Shaman's one of the best at for, like really punishing decks that have to use their own health to to remove. But. Uh. It's fairly inconsistent. And it struggles with some of the weapons, but the thing is, when you, when you drop that. Uh, um, the Fell Reaver on turn 5, if there's no Execute, the Fell Reaver might be able to win the game alone, because it's gonna connect a couple of times. The, the burn cards from it don't really matter that much. Yeah, yeah, true that. Well, looks like the early game curve has been decided by uh, putting out two of the strongest cards available to it, and there's no Fiery War Axe for Trump. Steady just armors up. Yeah, plays it slowly. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a slow playing, but at the same time, the... Uh... None of the Whoa. options that opened up were really oh. that amazing. Oh my god! I mean, it's gonna get cleaned up by Whirlwind, but still, uh, he gets three chuckles, and uh, in case that there was no Whirlwind, it was so strong. Yeah, it's a crazy one. I mean, and then, both. yeah. I mean, you don't alter here or Chow Hero Power. Do you Chow Hero Power? Okay. It's two juggles. Oh, so three. Yeah, it's actually gonna work out better than, uh, than the Master would have because of the Whirlwind. So uh, well, well done there by Silent Storm. For me, like the, it's like oh, the entry monster. I have a juggler. It's like so hard to pass up. <laughs> the the upside to the monster battle play is very high. Like if you can run away yeah, with the game at that point, it's just you know they can't do anything. Like if it was not there, if the Wallowin was not there, it would have been so huge. And this is this is amazing by uh, by Silent Storm. The way he's curving out here, even a Shredder for this turn, it's perfect. Trump's hand isn't looking nearly as bad as it did a minute ago, though. Like, the, the unstable ghoul of the Whirlwind is making this a little bit more bearable. The mm -hmm. double ghoul with Whirlwind makes it even more bearable if you want to go for some kind of a crazy play along those lines. Acolyte of Pain is a very, very consistent play. Mm -hmm. Already like, very I, well. I don't think Trump's out of it yet, by any means. Like, he's, oh, no. he really struggled with the early game. Yeah. But this, uh, Warrior needs to struggle with the early game, otherwise uh, Paladin has no chance in this matchup. It'd be like, if, if Paladin was incapable of building any kind of pressure early on, this matchup would almost certainly be like 90% plus for a patron. But um, because there is this ability for high curves, whether it's mini bot plays into shredders or like muster for battle into quartermaster, like those kinds of things exist to really try to make uh, the Warrior uncomfortable. 
Yeah. The Acolyte of Pain here is pretty sweet. I mean, if you, you can get a card draw if you want it, which is probably the most sensible way to approach the turn, because it's going to help you curve with the hero power afterwards, and you're probably going to lose a shredder no matter what. <laughs> My silent Storm's going to have to go for his own Acolyte. Going to take the extra draw from Trump's... Sure. Uh, Trump's Another uh, ghoul? Unstable ghoul. Spawn a no ghoul, way. Do it. No way. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That would have been insane. Yeah. Mm, does it matter if you trade into this, or can you battle just rage? hit the face instead? Ah, Battle Rage is Battle Rage, probably. yeah, but still, he knows that he needs to end the game fairly quickly, so... And then there's already a bunch of cards, and the Acolyte is going to be drawing more for Trump, so he, Trump doesn't... Trump is not in a spot where he would need the Battle Rage that much, so... Mm -hmm. Silence Tom, uh, I, I believe it's correct to go face turn. Yeah. Battle Rage is still excellent here. Battle Rage gives you flexibility to add Armor Smith to challenge the board, use the Fire War Axe to clean up his Acolyte of Pain, or even draw into something better if you pick it up. I yeah. feel my Arcane like not too bad. There's so many options for not Trump. Well. It's not even it's not even funny at this point. Wow. Like this turn was so full of options. Um and he's he's got card draw to last for weeks. Yeah, it's over the whirlwind play and get clear. Does he execute yeah. both? Oh, yeah, he got the execute. I think that's a fine play. It's pretty reasonable. Losing the execute yeah. doesn't feel great, but still getting the clear at this point. With that, with that kind of hand, I think it's just fine. And uh, this is going to be a bad turn from Silence Tom. See, um, that was interesting because I, I, I'm also in the camp to believe that as a paladin, you're always afraid to build your board too much. So, like, the more minions that come up, like, is it a liability to, like, let them stay alive? Because some of them were less than three attack, right? We had the crazed alchemist. Um, and I guess a 1-1 one, one Silverhand recruit can get yeah. buffed. So. But still, yeah. there's, like, minions out there which can make the Frothing Berserker stronger or get the Grim Patron value. Certainly uh, interesting. And, yeah, I think it's a, it's a big worry of the, the Paladin players. And it turns out to be true most of the time. It's just that you still can't prevent playing them. Unless you're looking at like a guaranteed lethal, very often you don't, you still can't afford not playing those things. There's no way he can, he can avoid playing those monsters. I mean, yeah. They, what does he play next? A heal bot? Five mana three three. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I mean, it's on curve with the hero power. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah. become Vulnerable to a grim patron, but it does to an unstable ghoul. That's also another challenge too that people don't really talk too much about. It's like. The fact is, the Unstable Ghoul opens up another world that people start playing around Grim Patrons. It's like, well, a 3 attack minion now can kill the Unstable Ghoul. It's really unfortunate. I'm not just Peacekeeper. Well, um... You know, if you get the muscle for battle Quartermaster, it's a pretty impressive board. Yeah, he can do it, because in case that there's the Warsong Grim Patron thing coming, he does have the Consecration ready. Yeah. So it will, it will clean up all those three years. And you've got the... You're just gonna leave one patron up. Yeah. Right. But it's so huge, like, if he goes for the Warzone Commander thing here, then he, then he's gonna lose the Warzone Commander. There's only one left, so if the, if Trump if Trump goes for that play, goes for the Grim, Grim Patron thing, then uh, not destroying the last Warzone Commander could potentially lose him the game. I think on the flip side, is he even okay letting all these 1-1s one survive and then getting a second Frothing Berserker with like the two Whirlwind effects, the Unstable Ghoul and the Whirlwind? What about Quartermaster? If that hits, you're going to lose the game right away, right? Not necessarily, because the Paladin... Think, yeah, Frothing would win. Yeah, okay. the Froth... If you get the set, Actually, no, you don't have enough mana for that. You only can play yeah. the two Frothings. You can't even play a Whirlwind effect. You'd be, you'd well, be having well, to wait two turns for that, yeah. I think Wallwind might be fine. The Warsong is... It, uh, I, 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 I do like I what know. you're saying, though. Steve. He doesn't even have time for it anymore. There's no time. Yeah. <laughs> actually, that's a really good point. Take too long to make decisions. That is actually really funny to me. Okay, so by doing this, he's actually um, allowing himself to do the patient play next turn and maybe get more value out of it. And it's also going to mm -hmm. let him get a frothing play if that comes up. So by not going all in right now, he's still oh oh. Man. The Harrison Jones shut down on the death spite, pretty good. Um, yeah. The one ones you're not really married to. You should probably cash in on them and kill the Nomich Inventor beforehand. Yep, for sure. Yep. And one damage to the face too, so that way uh, the whirlwind effect clears it. 
And that death spot going to museum. Wow. There's still one more whirlwind and uh, an unstable cool, so he does have access to that type of the, the whirlwind effect still uh, later on. Yeah, three so whirlwinds. It's not a like, complete disaster, but death spot is one of the key cards in Patreon for sure. That's also an important card too. Defender of Argus is um, pretty valuable now that he'd already used one of his executes. And so he's got mm -hmm. Tyrion and Defender, so like that's going to be really hard to get through in the next couple turns. I mean, I still feel like there's a chance for the Paladin here, even though I, I still lean towards the Grim Patron. I think so, too. Uh, because they, eventually the frothing will happen, and I'm not sure if uh, if the Paladin can end the game in time. But on the other hand, there's Tyrion, and one, one, one execute was already spent. So how, how efficiently can he get through it? If he doesn't find the lethal damage, this, for example, the second, oh, that's a huge draw. Yeah, that is a crazy really nice. momentum yeah. pickup for next turn. Like yeah, you play so this you next turn, you're getting every combo piece you wanted for yeah. a lot cheaper. That that's a huge deal. Because if, if he wasn't finding the lethal combo in time, or the Emperor, for example, then the Tyrion just might have been enough to end the game before it happens. Interestingly so enough, impressive. the uh, defense of Argus with Zombie Chow stops the patient spam a little bit. Hmm. It's a little, a little consideration. I mean, the heal bot and the zombie chow are good recipients of the buff just because of the grim patron. One thing to call to attention to, I'm not sure how much of an impact this has, but mm -hmm. Trump had the opportunity to battle rage when he had that no mission vendor sitting there against the one ones. Right. And he didn't, he didn't play it. He floated two mana, if you recall, because he was thinking about playing on stable ghoul. If he played that, hypothetically speaking, he could have picked up Thoris and making his cards cheaper and even be deeper into his deck. So Early I wonder on. the implications of that. If because the thing about it, you brought up a really good point. Is Tyrion just like too fast here? Is he like one turn ahead? Because now you have to play Thorson, but then are you yeah. being pushed out of the game at that point? And so if he was able to drop Thorson preemptively because of the card draw, maybe that would have changed the outcome. But now he's one turn behind. Mm, this is a lethal here. I'm trying to figure. There's like no armor ups because he can go uh, defender and. Uh... Oh, well, an execute is still a really good out. He has to pick it up, but the execute is still amazing. No matter how you look yeah, at it. Yeah, slam, slam is really useful here too. Okay. And there's so many plays that can be made on this board. Wow. There are so many plays. I think it's going for some kind of big draw. Yeah, it's got to be. Okay. No, well, no he... draw. Just base Okay. So he's gonna sacrifice one of them with the. Uh... Yeah, he doesn't want to take any. He doesn't want to like die next turn, so he'll okay. suicide uh, a couple. Get five health get back. To... Yep. Control the board. Demand a response. But um... then you know, then there's gonna be the consecration coming, and uh, now there's no more Warson. Mhm. Mm uh, this patron is a lot less effective than I'm pretty sure Trump. Would have liked it to be because this this weapon is basically was gonna allow Silent Storm to wipe the board away without too much of a yep. worry, and he came in to follow it up with an anti heal bot just to make sure he stopped off. The master for battle, who needs uh, a Springer anyway? Yeah, you <laughs> have a light justice. Yeah, man, <laughs> it's a one four. I mean, it gives four cards to your opponent when they Harrison Jones it. They mill faster. <laughs> yeah, you can mill your opponent. Yeah. I was actually thinking about that, because when he played the first Master, master for Battle, he chose to not attack that uh, with Light Justice. There's probably some considerations with Harrison Jones. And uh, he wanted to, because he, uh, Trump's hand was almost full. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh speak of that. Uh, wow. Speak of the devil, we were talking about Emperor Thorson. Oh and, my god. Wow. Yeah. And this is, I, I would venture to say this is a decent patron turn, but then again... I, with the whirlwind looming, you can wait one turn and probably get decent value anyway. I, I just like trading patron inner rage and then force him to have equality consec or. Would you be some willing to um? Frothing. Uh, well, I wasn't gonna suggest frothing because, but I guess you can also be more aggressive. But I was thinking about even drawing more, like with, because like battle rage is just sitting there, man. Like I'm just trying to figure out ways to get it out, because I think a higher priority is like figuring out ways you can kill your opponent, um, and a lot of it involves drawing cards. Just draw one, or. Well, so, I, I mean, I don't, if, I don't know if he could like go for the whirlwind because of how, uh, how many uh. How many whirlwind effects he's already burned through? Both of the, I think yeah. the first whirlwind was spent. Both of the 
Unstable ghouls are gone. There is yeah. a slam option, and then Bower Edge, but that feels like you weaken your board too much. Yeah. Violent Storm doesn't have much left. Nope. Yeah, his he hand is a bit out. dry. Lay on hands are gonna have to come out, like... Second frothing. Can't charge. Yeah. No charge, no win. So, right? let's... let's slam first, right? If we slam first, then we can pick up the second Fiery War Axe? Actually, wait. Slam Whirlwind. Uh, he's not quite. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The, yeah, it's looking up, like um, a lot of. If he picks up, if he picks up the second, if he picks up the second Warsong Commander, would mm -hmm. that be like enough damage to potentially win the game at all? Not right away, I don't think. Not from thirty, but he's gonna be close enough. It's gonna be enough next turn with the Whirlwind effect and the patrons and everything. But okay. Slam in a rage. Well, he's gonna go for like a big battle rage yeah. with uh, a lot of patrons. This is fine. So, in a rage, whirlwind. By the way, this probably berserker is gonna get huge. Oh yeah. Gonna get Look nuts. at that card draw. You, you asked about the battle rage huh. earlier, right, Frodan? Thing is, I don't know if he has enough animation time for this to all be. <laughs> the frothing is gonna like forever. Yeah, so I think he just has to slam to kill and then hit the face. But oh. you can't hit the face. He's he's almost out of, almost out of cards. I don't see anything, man. This is all right. It'll be scary for for. No, he he okay, definitely so, got the slam off. It's all, all right. right. He got the attack with the frog. Did he get the frothing off. attack off? I mean, that's the big yeah, That's what I wonder. He almost certainly has. All right. Yeah, he did. Bgh. Right yeah. up there. Yeah. Oh wow. Wait, no, it doesn't do anything here. Well, I mean, huh. it kind of does, but not enough. Not well, enough. it's uh, it what really makes it difficult is to execute. Or not even. It's like the fact that his opponent drew his entire deck. It's like <laughs> he has he has so many resources at his disposal. So no matter yeah. even if he trades down BGH and Sludge Belcher, uh, his opponent has War Song and like the Sludge Belcher is so bad for like the Frothing Berserker because there's so many ways for it to add damage to the Frothing Berserker that you just die. Yeah, yeah that should do it. Man, that lies justice, drawing four cards. Yikes! Look at that. Another yeah, yeah. Has to be enough. Yeah, with execute alone, it's enough, basically. Like, you don't even have to start stacking. Oh. Yeah, cool Taskmaster. Slam. Slam is man mode. <laughs> Slam, execute, because, you know, why not? Yeah, I guess I was thinking more like uh, cool Taskmaster, execute, but it's all good. It's not even really BM, it's just kind of how it is. Yeah. This is uh, sh more than enough. Is it? Yeah, it's gonna be exact. Yeah. Almost, oh, yeah, you're right. You can, the, you can keep the, killing and, and uh, adding yeah. more damage to it. With so. the 1 1 and then trade. That's, yeah, that's already. Already lethal. 20. But not by much, I think it's exact. Yeah, it is. He, he had one more page from the Hugo I like with. Oh, okay. I think. Or I was like, he's yeah, not that high I think overkill. If he went cool Taskmaster, he actually would have even optimized more damage too, because he would have yeah, been able to ex the attack with the cool Taskmaster, and then uh, yeah, and then that adds damage to minions, like a bunch of stuff that's not really that relevant <laughs> now, because he basically could have done twenty plus damage that turn. Yeah. So uh, right. a very important first win here for Trump because he gets some confidence back. I think last week he struggled a little bit with that mid range paladin. Yeah. Yep. And now he's uh, punishing the opponent who does play pally. So I guess. Uh, Table's turn. Kind of the expected result there after we noticed it's patron and uh, Trump had a... Well, Silent Storm curve out really well, like the starting hand from him was amazing. But Trump had the tools to deal with that early aggression and uh, when it, when the game gets that far, it has, um, there's very little hope for the Paladin, I think. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't help that his late game, like once he loses the early board, that and it's funny because GVG allowed Paladins to get that early board, but as a consequence of that, when they lose it, it feels even worse than they used to be. It's just that now at least they've got uh, a tiny opportunity. Yeah, the, the, when the game goes far, the, the big thing is the, how efficiently the battle rage can be used, because it's, it's not even difficult to draw multiple cards with that. And Paladin has, doesn't really have a good way to keep up with the card draw. Yeah. Uh, there's, you might play one lay in hands, but that's eight mana for three cards. Battle Rage is two mana for seventeen. Sometimes eight cards or seven. So, <laughs> so uh, those don't really like. Uh, it's not exactly fair. 
Yeah, we'll see exactly. I'm surprised to, to know if on the 22nd we'll see some changes made to the way uh, Patron operates in any way, shape, or form. Again, you know, new cars might come out that make the deck obsolete, so that might solve the problem on its own. Um, but it's next week, man. Know. You know, know. Uh, ATLC, I think, is may even be changing a little bit of things um, in anticipation for that, because if there's going to be a broadcast going on of some kind of announcement, mm -hmm. then... Uh, well, it's the same yeah. time as the Archon Team League, so I think next week we might even have some changes. This is kind of exciting. It's coming mid-season, yeah, right? Mid-season. Yeah. July right 22, season. I got one of these things today. One of the scrolls. It's nice. pretty awesome. It does it play the Big. trumpet sound? No, mine was like broken. It had the thing <laughs> in there with the, with the sound. I, I saw, the, saw the videos. Uh, they like it's you. supposed to play the sound, yeah. but mine was like not playing, and I was so sad. Yeah. Return to sender. <laughs> just kidding. But, uh, so it means that they, 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 they like you, Savits. They just like you the least out of everyone else because they gave you a broken one. <laughs> I think you just sure. need to, to buff the trumpet, man. That's it. It's a rusty but horn, I, is what you got. I guess it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, like being yeah. able to hold on to it. That's right. Everyone else feels left out. Boo -hoo, boo -hoo, boo -hoo. Yeah, but I was thinking of buying all the GVG little invention things if I could find them online, but no one's actually willing to sell them. I like collect all the GVG announcement uh, scrolls. <laughs> Gonna be Tuesday and Thursday, by the way. I got confirmation from Mamaz that uh, we'll be shifting those dates. We'll let you know more about it after the jump, though. We're gonna. Go ahead and hop into Frozen Ice versus Trump, Hunter versus Warlock, going to game number two. Yeah, Trump oh, yeah, is uh, so. going ahead very, very... Like, he's getting his two lineups first. Like, Frozen Ice is more of an aggressive player that I think his uh, his strategy so far in the tournament hasn't really paid off too well. Like, he's a very aggressive player. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I'm, I have to assume he's going to be playing, again, those very aggressive Hunter and Warlock decks. Maybe. Yeah, Trump with the, with the hand lock. Uh, I've been playing a lot of this matchup lately because I've been I've been laddering with Handlock and uh, surprise, there's a lot of hunters in the <laughs> in the ladder right now, so, like as always. So um, yeah, it looks like the face hunter, and I think that's actually it might be easier for the for the Handlock, but uh, but it, but he still needs to get the right draws, the Molden Giants basically. That's like the key turn and the Sun Fury. He he has a Dark Bomb and Sun Fury. I would expect him to keep those two. They are pretty damn good. Yeah, these are really effective cards if you draw into the Molten. Um, yeah. yeah, the Face Hunter, for, you know, I, it's so weird because the Face Hunter is more aggressive and yet it struggles more against Handlock because mm -hmm. its damage is pretty consistent. Um, it's like every turn it does maybe 5, 6 damage. But then you have Midrange Hunter, which is like, it just like explodes in damage because it builds the board so much that it can do 18 in one turn because it has yeah, a high main on it. And then all of a sudden, you've been like trying to play Molten Giants, but you can't really because it's just been curving well. And all of a sudden, it hits you for like a truck for 12 or, you know. Yeah, so you go from healthy to dead instead of slowly being ground down to zero. Yeah, with the, with the mid range hunter, you can even uh, sometimes play around the Moltens a little bit. But with the face hunter, you just gotta go and hope that there's no Moltens. Yep, every single time. And then when they have Moltens, they also have antique heal bounds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a rule, right? You, you get them paired all the yeah. time. Pick one up, pick the other. Yeah, that's a pretty rough draw from uh, Frozen Ice. Oh, and he gets the Leah. <laughs> Frozen Ice has also been struggling too, statistically, in the league. And it feels unjustified because, again, these players on Team Celestial are very good, both on ladder and in tournaments. Yeah, um, it's just It just feels like they, unfortunately, have either had some bad draws or some bad matchups. It could also be chalked up to their deck preparation, too. Um, but I don't really feel like that's even been the biggest factory so far. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you are calling Tiddler bad just based on his record, you better have a gray face. Oh, yeah. It's like, there's no way. <laughs> no space. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, there has to be a Kappa, Kappa in there somewhere. Because he's an amazing player. And uh, I don't think, like, aside from, like, that one mislead or the, that his... This play hasn't been off either. Yeah. No, he, he even spotted it. He just didn't have enough time. Oh, yeah. People just miss it straight up because they're like, oh, oops. Not too much stuff to do at the same time. Yeah. Meanwhile, in this game, it's looking uh, really good for Trump. Double you know, heal pots and a belt for next turn. Molten Giants. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he has everything. Yeah, he's got the heal bot that I would like to point out actually got paired with the Molten Giant. Yeah, and that's. 
Mm -hmm. Like it's such a big deal. The owl is already gone too, because the belcher is gonna heal for seven, kind of, while dealing damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Frozen Ice has both of his weapons, which is not exactly the best. It is still burn, but um, you know he, mm -hmm. he's gonna have to take a little bit of his time here. And I like that he's not just full out rushing to hit the face because he knows that he wouldn't be able to answer those things very easily. Second oh, wow. oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the revenge okay. of Trump from last week. This is Trump just swinging back in and be like, you know what? That last week was a fluke. And that Belcher is so huge, right? I think it just had needs to bump into it here and play another bow. I mean, yeah. yeah. I think <laughs> it's the key not going to be enough direct damage. I thought like Kill Command had to is keep the key, phase. right? Like, you don't yeah. want to necessarily part ways with Kill Command because of. Uh, what g it gives you when the molten giants do inevitably come out? Do you kind of feel like, he, like he's win condition here, like to keep the kill command that quick, so to try to burst him down after the moltens. Like just hope that there's uh, with, when the moltens come, that there's only taunts and not a heal, but same turn. Yeah. No, I agree. I think, the, as you mentioned, the, the burn is definitely the thing you want to keep. In this matchup, it's one of those things where you can contest the board fairly well mid-game, early game against the, the, the Warlock because he tends to play very slowly and you get to respond to it very often or they're forced to have the Dark Bombs coils. But then when you get to the late game, they start dropping the Belchers, dropping the Moltens. The burn that you want to use on the minions is very often um, ineffective because then you just have to deal with the minions and you have no, with the burn and then you have no way to push for damage. When I'm playing hand like and I see a kill command on my belt, so I'm like so happy about it. <laughs> yeah, you're like I'm never gonna die from you know fifteen to zero in one turn or two when I don't uh, don't have time to heal. Oh my goodness, this might be one of those turns where actually a dark bomb on own face would be good because that would allow him to play both of the moldens and something. <laughs> <laughs> this is like one of those few times. Would, be a would you, would you right. Hellfire and double molten? You couldn't taunt, but... You can't taunt them. You can, yeah, like, he's actually, actually right. Good. Just looking at the heal bots in his hand too. Like there's no way 7 mana is gonna add up to 11 damage. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you underestimate hunters. No, but you're right. I, I really don't see how that's gonna be possible. It, especially with yeah. the... Uh... I guess double quick shot and uh, kill command. But he just saw a kill command too. Yeah. Uh, this seems a bit safer. I, I guess it's fine. This would have been I mean, so it's, it's so next moment. level though. Uh, I, I wonder really if he saw it. I play, but uh, might have been all right there. <clears throat> would have had three less health and uh, one dark bomb less in his hand, but also one molten time. Don't drop. Dark bomb your own face. Oh, I like yeah, it. It's, it's it's creative. It's next creative. level. <laughs> it really is next level because it's really counterintuitive to receive that much blowback. <laughs> Try instead of the Bolton Giants. <laughs> I'm out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, here, Frozen Ice, he's in a really awkward spot again because he just drew Mad Scientist when he already has the trap. Yeah. So they overlap. And where does this weapon hit even go? He can I guess you have to sacrifice everything, and you take eight just to kill the giant. Otherwise, I don't see how you're supposed to keep putting pressure up. Like it's just not happening, is it? Yeah. Yeah, he kind of has to do it. I mean, it feels bad, but it seems like the only play. I guess you can play the trap here. Not that I could the weapon. Oh. Okay. Yeah, trap might be okay because it just gives him another charge of the bow. Yeah. That's what he's looking for here. Oh yeah, and he saw one molt, and it wouldn't be madness to play around too. I think. There's no way in this position that he can play around the second mold and yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no more taunter, so at this point, it's still possible. Well, then again, with the double heal bot, it's going to be really hard. Double heal, but it's such a big deal. And Trump, is Trump already setting up lethal for next turn? Yeah, he is, because he has now yeah. 13 power on board and uh, another Dark 6 in his hand. Yeah. With the Hellfire. Wait. His opponent, right? I saw like yeah. the mouse going. Oh on. yeah, no. If he wanted to kill, he could just mortal coil his own. Yeah, his own fear protector. That'd be interesting for sure. That's not a bad card. That's Is pretty it helpful. Time for actually. the quick shot dream. You Gosh. might. Uh, Mad scientist quick shot actually allows him to cycle and kill two minions on the board, and he keeps the hounds. Yeah, he has to kill two minions on board, or he's dead. Mm -hmm. There's no yeah. other way because because there's the hellfire still. And he has to kill and with quick shot as well. Yeah. 
But is that a winning play? I don't know. But uh, on the other hand, he does know that he had, that no hellfires have been cast yet. Yeah, the the winning play is definitely to like probably kill one of the minions, like the Sun Fear Protector, and then charge and hope he doesn't have any removal. He just used the Dark Bomb too to the face, right? Yeah, so you you have to expect that he's pushing for lethal. If he's dark bombing your face here, he's definitely going right. for something. Quick shot into Hunter's Mark. Can you believe? Bugs? Oh my God! Can oh, that's you believe? Insane. Nope. Yeah. I believed, but I'm sorry, Frodan, it wasn't enough. Yeah, well, he did do the one play that keeps him alive, so that's good for him. <laughs> but still, like, uh, Trump is gonna heal back to 21. Like, wow. Yeah, the the heal back to 21 is pretty devastating here. Misha might be the only way to win. Like Alpha what? Animal Companion? It's uh, like maybe a second Misha. quick shot. Mm -hmm. Second Misha. quick shot. Dream. Okay, yeah, you're right. Okay. No, shot not open. even. Quick, should, quick shot wouldn't do it. I think it's good. Oh, man. Oh, wait, was he that close to winning? Without the heal bot, did he have it? Yeah. <laughs> he did. Yeah. He did a second heal bot. <laughs> Oh man, that heal bot must have been the worst. But I mean, you can still do it, right? You go ahead and you start yeah. trading away. <laughs> face Hunter, I've never seen Face Hunter trade this much. Yeah. I mean, he can trade everything again. He's forsaken. He, dies. <laughs> yeah. he knows he's yeah. dead to Hellfire. Oh my god, he's forsaken. Dark Unless he trades everything. I mean, he can get another explosive drop so he can set that up yeah. to like yeah. one and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You you put like the giant on one health and you put the heal bot to zero with your wolf rider and then you just go face with your oh, one health. <laughs> the crazy plays. <laughs> so much to kill two giants. This is so ridiculous. I don't even know what How to say. How often do you kill two giants as a face hunter like this? Oh my goodness. It's giving what? him kind of a chance, but not really. Like uh -huh. the long terms of things. Um, well, one thing to consider that handlock it doesn't really have much of a hand. Well, Defend of Argus would kind of be good here, to say the okay. least. Well, that doesn't do too much. Wait, how, just, much would you, how much would you kill it. for a Farseer right now? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> how about a Voodoo Def Defender? Defender of Argus would do it. Oh, that's a good, like, that's a good, that's good. enough, man. You don't need yeah, a Farseer. Yeah, that's gonna get the job done. Didn't you know you could Shadow Flame Giant to deal 8 to face? <laughs> That sounds like it would maybe be a little bit broken. Yeah, it's um, it's actually called the uh, the Twitch play where. Oh yeah. The the Twitch chat, you know, they they've got all those plays they can make, but only the people in that club can come up with those plays and get them done. Yeah, I like, like that hold on the attack. Um, Molten Giant. I mean, in the very worst case scenario, that's misdirection. You don't want to hit your own mm -hmm. face, and also you can get value by killing a minion there. This should wrap it up. Yeah. Oh, fire will make it relatively close. I mean, it is single digits. Remember, two heal bots were played. Goodness gracious. It was actually really close because he's on five now with the Leprechaun, so. Oh, you're right. This could have been a near, like, a draw. It could have almost been a draw. Like, given a few difference in the way cards mm -hmm. were played out, that could have been very close. No, Frozen is really fighting back there, but with the, with the draw that Trump had, like, uh, I, don't, I don't think he made any misplays either, and. If you if you get that straw and play it well, I mean there's not much face hunter can do with yeah. double molten, double heal. But I think he ever had double sun furies, and uh, in right, the end, his last belts are like it's, it was quite crazy. The only thing missing was mortal coils for the one toughness minions. No, it's kind of uh, it's kind of an unfortunate like it's not really the way Frozen Eyes played it. It's just the way Trump's draw lined up. Yeah, and everything was Absolutely. flawless against that specific matchup. It couldn't get better. Trump is done for the day. <laughs> That's right. Just he like won that. two O. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. yeah good scout for Steve. last week. Now, uh, one thing to point out is that Kibler is yet to play, and Kibler, uh, from what I've been told, is actually the only undefeated player remaining in the entire league. And you know, if he can continue it to week three, that's highly impressive. Um, and keep in mind that there is going to be a prize rewarded for the person who's performed the best. I think. We're, we're not calling it MVP. We're calling it Master of Duels. 
So there's oh. a special title. What if Kibler actually had the Dragon Master, Master of Duel, to add to the Brian Kibler Kibler from Brian Kibler Gaming? Wouldn't that just be like <laughs> the ultimate title? Uh, yeah. Close to it, at I least. Trump yeah. wants it, though, because I think according to Yu Gi Oh! lore, that's what Yu Gi becomes. He becomes the king of games or something like that. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't watch it. I, I watched the Trumpio video and uh, I wasn't digging it until the very end. And I was like, I didn't understand it. I tried to get it and I literally, until the very end, couldn't figure out what was happening. I thought it was somebody on like a mushroom trip or something. Just it, it playing cards. usually involves that uh, okay. with some other, you know, hallucinogens probably. But, um, you know, the, the key point of that is that, you know, you, it's just basically parroting another card game, which is kind of what it is. Uh, by the way, uh, Deza, you can see in the bottom of your stream, is talking about how his favorite moments are just watching some of the decks that you don't get to normally see in Conquest format. And one of them is classes like Shaman or Priest or Paladin. And in fact, because we see the lineups how it is today, we'll see all nine classes effectively spread across uh, the two best of 11s. Right. We're actually getting covered everything. There's not a single class that doesn't show up in the lineups. No. Well, is that a first? Uh, for one day of broadcast, I believe we had one, but the priest in general just gets ignored very often. We've had people, maybe one person bring priest and then you know everyone else did, but it's really funny that we had a priest mirror of all things. Yeah. I think the only thing left is like a shaman, mid-range shaman mirror, and that's something that we'll probably never see. Yeah, yeah I, don't I don't think, think we'll see we're that. We'll see that anytime soon. <laughs> Savic is just saying, you know what, this class is hopeless. Uh, we shouldn't be bothering with it. it it's just yeah. that, it's not that it's bad, it's that other things are just so much better, because it's always a matter of relative power, where if you put it in context of a, like, of a current metagame, there's no way you can play it. I think Patreon just punishes it too much, uh, among other things. It's one of the few things, and even though you can get a good Lightning Storm, you know, for 3 damage at the very least with a Totem, and you can get that, uh, that AoE, to guarantee a clear on the patrons, it's not consistent enough. Like the times where yeah. you get it done is just it's just not high enough to justify doing. Uh, you need to have that aggressive uh, approach to in mm -hmm. form of mech shaman because with the mid range thing, there's no way you can keep up with the card draws and uh, survive. Like it, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I just think that it's like completely hopeless. That's why shaman is so uh, not doing so well right now. Maybe maybe we get after we get some more uh, more shaman cards, maybe class specific cards. Something to um, to counter the patrons. It, it's gonna be a top tier deck again. Yeah, I wonder if we'll ever see like a stasis deck. You know, playing mana wraith and narrow bar web lord to stop players from uh, casting their stuff. That that seems like a, something like shaman could pull off. Yeah, but those need, those type of effects need to be attached to um, to minions with reasonable bodies for reasonable mm -hmm. mana cost. So this, it's like not too panic punishing because like the web lord, like the one for it feels. Kind of useless. It has that cool effect, but uh, you can't really justify playing it that easily. Whoa! Did I see a Cogmaster on the Druid side? No, no, what? it's a Cogmaster oh, on the uh, the Shaman. Oh, side. all right, okay. Druid I got very just has a little, there. yeah, a little bug where it just tries to get the opening hand under the way. Kibler sees the wrath on the Cogmaster, oh, no. and I think he's pretty happy about <laughs> oh, that. Oh man, if that's this, this is. Oh, oh my god! No oh, else. Keeper gets picked up. At, well, then again. But it's now there's a over. second. And there's a coin flame tongue do totem. It. This is really Not bad. Sir, do it. Zabomatic coin flame You have to. Kibler, if you don't do Kibler. that, we are, you know, we, we are your lifelong fans if you do that. There was no answer to it. There's no way he can deal with the double Zabomatic. One of those <laughs> will survive. Like, there's no way a druid can clear both of them. <laughs> this Innervate Starfall, way. right? It's like one way. Or like, point. Innervate Blood Mage Wrath. Point it! Kibler! Do it, point Kibler! It. Like, yeah! yeah. Okay. Oh my god! Okay, taking screenshots right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous! Well, uh, Sign Storm can kill one of them. What? <laughs> Yeah. And then, Bigger and problem. then he's gonna get lava bursted. Is this minion ever gonna get lava bursted, <laughs> or is Kibler just punching face with everything he's got for 15? I would like to remind you of how much this damage. Oh my! At this point, God. like, there's no way it's not going to face. He um, like earth shock and uh, power mace, but I think you want yeah, to get earth shock, earth shock even. Earth shock power on. mace is down on the play. <laughs> I think you got face with everything. It's actually Keep good, man. Taunt. It's good. Yeah. Mm. 
This is amazing. So Sabomatics, man. First shot, because how do you get past the taunt? Yeah, you keep it. You yeah, love just a face. That's what yeah. you do. Yeah, power mace. You can put him down to 8, so he would have lethal with the Urchuk Lava Burst next turn. Yeah, unless there's uh, an armor up. Armor up. How, this is so ridiculous. The and then, and then Fire Elemental so kills it. And then Fire yeah, Elemental will finish him off. It's just no way. He has to, like, kill the mech before oh, he hears Oh, wait. wait! Oh, yeah, that's a lot. Okay, not over yet. Could he live? Crackle. Crackle, crackle. Forgot about that, uh, that one. Uh, but still. So you, uh, Lava Burst. <laughs> the Lava Burst thing feels like I mean, that, you can't uh, fire a little mech left. Dude, it's so low. But he's gonna overload if he lava burst this time, so he has to wait for it. Yeah. Actually, no. How does Druid do this? Help. But still, what can he do? Swipe? You have to swipe what? the 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 yeah, flame swipe and kill He has a full clear. He's fighting back. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, but, <laughs> but um, far less. He with the nine problem. damage. But then he can heal up with the Ancient of Lore. Could this be the time where Crackle never gets picked up? No, I mean the fire elemental is gonna connect to face next. Yeah, time, right. Unless they're like totally into free spare, but yeah. Oh man, that'd be crazy. It wouldn't be worse. Of nature. <laughs> he has the urge. Oh my god, he can clear that again. Oh, Kibler. I'm so sorry, Kibler. This dream yeah, starts. Yeah, do it. Force of nature. Perfect. His lore doesn't really like help. It, they, they, they heal somewhat wasted. I think the force of nature would be a better play. But now. He's on 8 health. Oh my gosh. Fell Reaver. Oh. Mech Warper Fell Reaver. And you do it. Oh yeah. You have no choice, really. And it's too good to pass. The only weakness you've got well, really is like a BGA for quick clear. could be to Lava Burst the... 5-5? Uh, five five? The 5-5 five five, and then... Then like, you can drop the Fell Reaver though. Yeah, yeah. But you can drop it next turn. I guess. I do like playing Fall Reaver here, though. The problem is, if he posts Fall Reaver, like, and he has big game Hunter, yeah, then yeah. his game is lost. I don't think it's lost. Like, he can still double deck a Crackle. I think it just play, play it all out here with the minions. Yeah, because Lava Burst could be lethal with another Lava Burst or a Crackle at any moment. So it's really just a matter of yeah. you finding one of your top decks. Okay. So, so many things. You can just go for it. It's like Lava Burst and Dominion, that might actually, if, if, if then the Fire Element like, gets dealt with, he might not have it anymore. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I really like this line. <laughs> and, yeah, I like it too. Just... and that's it, basically, that's it. right? Yeah. That is... Toshly into no, 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 freeze no, no. Toshly no. freeze. But it's still not good, because that was a third truck. Because he could silence oh, that. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> How about Toshly Taunt? Totally taunt. No, Urshak does the same thing. Yeah, no, it's the same, same yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Urshak. <laughs> Urshak <laughs> removes freeze but not taunt. Did you know that? What about Totally? Uh, so Urshak is gone. Oh, one he of sees them. one Urshak. Oh, no, 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 time rewinder. Okay. So you time rewinder here to get more information. No, it doesn't even matter because it's conquest. The deck is going to be out. Wow, Killer keeping up the streak. Fell here. What a no, no, thought! Yeah. It was double Zapomatics and the uh, flame thing. Oh my god. Well, goodness. I think the wrath on the Cogmaster is what won this game here. Like, it, it almost wasn't the follow up as much as it was the wrath of Sandstorm being used on yeah. an inconsequential minion, really. Like, if you look at it from the perspective of how the game developed, that 3 2 was a lot more impactful than the 1 2 that really threatened, what, 3 damage once or something? It's. No. Yeah. I mean, it's if you really also want to get. To. Um, more into it too. Uh, I think the real key is that they queued up into Druid, and that's mm -hmm. definitely Mech Shaman's best matchup amongst us by a big we, we, we have the statistics um, from uh, like the, the, the ones that Monk has gotten for us, and uh, I think I believe Mech Shaman was 11 wins and two losses against uh, Druid. So uh, <laughs> it's pretty disgusting. Yeah, it's like one of the most one-sided matchups in overall. Well, that's, that's kind of how Mech Shaman even originated, because Druid was uh, starting to get really popular. Um, as long as they teched to beat a lot of the... This is before, like, like uh, Patron was really even a thing. This when Black Rock Mountain was first coming out here. Um, people were really relying upon Druid and whatnot for a while, and so you'd punish them really heavily. Yeah. And Mech Shaman just, like, yeah. shot to the top of ladder very quickly. It was against also Hunter as well, wasn't it, for a bit? Sorry, yeah, what? it's it's all right. Like with the, the, the Fallen Reavers, you can raise the hunters. Okay. Oh yeah. But I think yeah, that's, yeah. that's like um, 
The, I think part of the reason why we don't see that much Mech Shaman anymore is that, that also that the Druid has faded out. So Druid faded out, then the, the Mech Shaman kind of followed it there. Yeah. But in a format like this, where, uh, where it, there will, will sometimes be the Druid and maybe some other good matchups too, Mech Shaman uh, is shining once again. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same yeah. as you know why Mech Mage is also less popular. You know all these different decks that preyed upon Druid, which is. A lot of them nowadays. You have the Warlock decks, the Patron Wards, Midrange Hunters, the anything that has Mirror Entity in it. Those kinds of things give Druid fits. Oh, yeah. And it's starting to become a problem because Value Town is up 3-0. Boys, Would what that if we see sweep? the 6-0 sweep dream? Yeah, Would it's your dream. It requires, a reverse sweep. <laughs> yeah, it, it requires... Um, oh, that's even funnier when you're up 5-0 and you lose six in a row. <laughs> It's it's funny unless you're on the losing team. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny right. for you know everybody in the world except for three people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> three. Okay. I like. Uh, um, but it becomes increasingly more difficult to win the you know uh, sorry to finish out six zero the more you win because the way you can target decks it's like well mm -hmm. if rogue's the last class then we can just play our most anti aggro or anti rogue with aggro hunter. Yeah, yeah it's just uh, it's like going going to be extremely difficult as you know that there's going to be counters coming and then it's like the first couple of or even the few decks are, are all going to be decks that uh, oh. are favorite against it oh interesting oh. okay so silence one's going with druid and dog's going with rogue and i'm it's... surprised that they sent out silent storm because if silent storm loses this he's benched that means dog is free to queue up freeze mage again and druid's on the bench giving him his best chance to sneak a freeze mage win and then you're asking Kibler to win one in six games with Hunter. Which seems very likely. And I think this matchup is also like a really cool example of, you know, two decks that play uh, for tempo. Like Druid and Rogue both play for tempo. They kind of mirror each other in the way they use Innervate and Prep. Like they want to get that one turn where they suddenly race ahead. The thing is the Rogue seems to have a lot more flexibility with the way it uses uh, its tools. Whereas the Druid is always trying to ramp for the board. And that's what the Rogue is best at denying, so... Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, Druid deck that Silent Storm is running. We saw some interesting cards in there that you, you usually don't see. There was a Toshli in there and also uh, Violet Teachers. Like, what's up with that? What do you guys think? I, I don't mind the Violet Teacher token deck. It allows you to be more aggressive um, and gives you more board presence. The thing that I don't like it against is Patron. Oh, well, <laughs> that's a good draw. <laughs> yeah. Well Save played. You um, don't like it against Patreon. I don't Patreon, like it against Patreon, but I like it against classes like Hunter, <laughs> which you know Hunter will be in the format for sure. So I, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of mixed on it. For a, a wide variety, like a huge lineup, I think it's actually okay. I think if you yeah. know, like, yeah, for example, nice. in a big Swiss tournament or a big open bracket tournament, like, you know, everyone will probably gravitate towards like Patron as one of the three decks that they bring in a best of five, then I'd, I'd yeah. hate it a lot more. But I think yeah. in this, is it's actually okay. So I mean, the tokens are pretty threatening with the double roars in the deck. So if you if you have a couple of one ones and the teacher survives, you can suddenly you can push for eight damage with for three mana. Yeah, That's good point. That's a really good point. So he's not gonna go for the Harrison Jones play on the deadly poison. Uh, he's gonna have to, he's gonna wait. Sorry for a deadly poison or oil to mm -hmm. come out. Even if he draws one less card, he's still ultimately happier about that. Yep. I personally, I really like just uh, just using it there. Just take those two extra cards and the tempo. I, th I think that a two mana tempo gain is a, is a big deal. I, I would have played the Harrison there without any hesitation. Yeah, me too, but... We'll see what ends up happening. So Harrison oh, for one here card. Here we go, finally the Harrison. No, it's still really good. Yeah, because the Eviscerate was just used, so the, the Harrison Jones is uh, is doing a pretty good work here. Oh, it is, sure. Oh, man. Okay. All he's missing is a prep to really turn this into an actual threat. Here we go, let's see what, if the tokens gonna get things done. Feature. They might my us. But it's not, it's still not as sticky as a... Uh, it's a pilot sweater, really. Yeah, because it's, like it's, it's what he's competing with, fight. really. Yeah. And he has it's like a good answer matchup. to it, too, through Lothab. Yeah, Lothab looks like the only player here. There's no, no way he can do anything else. This is Such like one, my. Man. 
I don't know. This is like the biggest problem with Rogue nowadays is exactly this hand. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, you have sure. like something to do, but you need like a specific, like you need preparation to make this hand good all of a sudden. So now you're, yeah, you're fishing yeah, for it. Yeah. And, um, you know, everything becomes really inconsistent again. Yeah. Well, like, I think it's the biggest card for the deck. Oh, it's not going to put a lot of them. That's interesting. Okay, Harrison's gone. So oh my god. Blade. He is big. setting up the biggest blade flurry of all time. No, I think I saw the biggest blade flurry of all time last week, where 6 0 had, I, I want to say, 11, 11 or damage weapon against the oh, uh, And uh, uh, it was like insane uh, the amount of damage I was able to do. So, is that going to be game next turn? Just on the basis of that Force of Nature Savage War? Like, how much damage does he have here? He can push, uh, how much is it? Uh, he's 11. Got 10, he's, right? he's got 10, right? 11 he's got, like, hero power. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, with the hero power. Wow. So, he's gonna be close to winning, and <laughs> Dog's still gonna wire the board. He's gonna be, like, one off lethal, so Dog's gonna have to find the heal bot right now. Like, there is no... No question, that's... Oh, or he low thebs and he goes for a backstab flurry after yeah. that pickup, I guess it's fine too. But still, like, how, how does Jock come back from this? He, he needs to find those heals. He needs to find them quick. He's gonna get one, oh. uh, one, one turn here to free, but, uh... I think he could still, uh, he could still do it. If he gets the initiative on pushing for damage in any way. Yeah. It's it just it really that he is, though, can... dependent upon, um... It really is dependent upon drawing the heal, though, because his opponent will put him down to 14. Mm -hmm. No matter what this turn. Well, you keep her the girl face, I guess, yeah. I think, yeah, you gotta set it up. You gotta set up the, the combo to be lethal. Shadow step, Lotha. <laughs> Just like That'll the girl be amazing, days. but I don't think it's in there. <laughs> how, how much damage is this? Uh, five. It's quite a bit, but not enough. Eleven. If he had flurry, that's lethal. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's just missing that one card. Actually, or Evistor, no, Evistor, he would have he'd be one man off lethal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no, yeah, he'd still be a, short, a little short. Wait, what? Oh, he's clearing. Cool. Yeah. So this is a patron yeah. druid. I can't be the only one seeing this hand, can I? Oh, 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 yeah. Whoa. Wait, whoa. <laughs> I was confused. I was looking at the rogue hand for a second. We just got. Okay. Looks like we went into the wrong game, fellas. The combo already looks bad enough, but yeah. that was like the next hell. <laughs> yeah, and all right. So Force of Nature's average will won this game here, and Drew is able to sneak a win. The 6-0 Dream is dead. More importantly, yeah. uh, Team Celestial is on the board. And yeah, on the board. That was a really sick draw, though. For the Druid player, everything seemed to just flow naturally. Yeah. Everything okay. really lined up there, and um, well done there. It was also important because if if he lost that game, there was that there was that bench rule, which would have then locked out um, Silent Storm. Uh, yeah. So uh, that makes it even more important that they got one done. They uh, got that one out of the way. And uh, one more thing about it: it was the Druid. Like Druid has been struggling in every single week. We've seen Druid struggle for somebody. So um, it's not going to be the case for them this time. Yeah, Savitz yeah. knows. Uh, Savitz has also been on the receiving end of Drew. <laughs> <a little> <laughs> yeah, and I think, like I, I was saying too, tactically, it was really important that Silent Storm kept alive because I'm pretty sure Dog would bring something like Freeze Mage again. And if the Druid's on the bench and the Freeze Mage comes out here and you're like one of its best matchups is gone... So how do you fight back against that if you're down 5-0? Uh, yeah. In this case, though, a new opportunity has been opened up for Team Celestial. Now everything's available. Um, you're up against Hunter, Rogue, and Mage. And I, th I think now that Druid's out of the way, though, Dog might just go ahead and queue up Freeze Mage because yeah. Druid's out of the way anyways. So might as well just go. Frozen Eyes might play a zoo deck. Like, he he's a very aggressive player, and that's definitely something you'd pin him on. If he brings out his Face Hunter, I mean, Freeze Mage is not bad depending on how the Ice Bears line up. So, I mean, I'm sorry you're not getting a 6 0, but. <laughs> We're, I, uh, I, I would have to say it. Warrior probably comes out here from Chitler. Yeah. Another thing to, to consider there is that if, if uh, they do go with Dog again and he loses, they, he's going to be benched and then Keebler is forced to play his remaining deck and then uh, Team Celestial would be able to just pick the best counters to it because they know exactly, exactly what's coming. Yep. So they might be still mixing it up here and just uh, let Keebler play. 
Yeah, no, it's exactly right. If Dog plays Freeze Mage, they put him on it. Uh, let's say Tiddler plays Warrior and is able to, you know, eliminate that. And then Kibler's first play Hunter. Then you have Tempo Mage by some reason. And you have that against Hunter. Like, of these course. kind of decisions end up snowballing. And then you tie right. up the series or even take the lead while putting your opponents uh, in a really bad momentum. Yeah, some yeah. people were saying the bench rule wasn't really impactful, but I think it's impactful in those situations where you've got a player who sealed up his wins very fast, like Trump did, and then suddenly you're down to two people with decks that you already kind of know what they're going to be, uh, and then you can line them up really easily, just execute them one at a time. Personally, okay. I really like the rule. I think it's, it's really cool to have, mm -hmm. and uh, it makes it more exciting. It, it puts so much more mind games into it. Like here, for example, if Team Celestial thinks that they're going to play Kipler because of the bench thing, then they can they pick the best deck against Kibler, but if they take the next level that they're, you know, it's just like, oh, I don't know, yeah. man. That's right. <laughs> Who it. thinks what? So basically, they're just going to both put out Hunter. They're yeah. like, you know what? We're going to brute force this as much as we can. But if Kibler's playing a slower version, I think Frozen Ice's face Hunter gets quite an edge. Oh, yeah. Usually the faster Hunter has been favored in this. Yeah, but uh, anything can happen. A good, a good hound monster taunt, for example, can be difficult at times if there's no owl. And uh, yeah, it, it 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 can go either way. Like who gets the mad scientists early on and yeah. stuff. <laughs> I think they're kind of interesting matchups, though. Like as far as hunter matchups go. Because, um, you know, as as, uh, as boring as Face Hunter might be, I think it becomes super interesting when you're facing it off mm. against uh, a mid-range or a hybrid. Because then playing around traps becomes really compelling to look at. Yeah. Oh, wow, Kibler's playing the double Lepernome opener deck as well. So it turns oh, out it's going to be... That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, he's going first, too. Yeah. That's what's really nice, because Lepernome's guaranteed to do good damage, unless your opponent has, um, you know, Creeper. like, on a Creeper. <laughs> Mad Scientist also is okay. Yep. But still, like, Gibbler's hand looks a lot better. I would yeah. agree. The first the Unleash the Hounds is pretty good in this matchup sometimes if it gets out of control, but the second is often pretty awkward if you have it early yeah. on. Yeah. It's a bit situational, and sometimes you don't get to cast even one good, and if there's no opportunity to unleash the Hounds, then you just have two dead cards in your hand. Not to mention that Frozen Ice also has a trap in the scientist already, so... Yeah, the trap also bad, because he he's gonna get a trap from that, so it's gonna be two explosives. Does he play a snake trap? Then he could actually try to get it right away from the juggler. Well, we've seen this deck, and I feel like we've seen every possibility of it, because he had the scientists and the traps, but if it yeah, is a snake trap, I'd be yeah. surprised. He played it against Trump's handlock, and he didn't go for a free oh, stuff, so it has, to be, it has to be only, on only explosives, then. What yeah. a pickup, man. That's like, it's nuts. I think it's some value. There's, there's the explosive trap. Right, there's the explosive trap. Yeah, but you can just down. hold it, can't you? Yeah. I guess, I guess so. I mean, you're still going to be able to trade. Yeah, you're going to get the initiative on trading. So again, that's a really big factor. So I guess just for that, it's worth it. Because you're going to lose the juggler yeah. anyway. But um, Yeah, he can, he can still trade those for whatever uh, Frozen Eyes plays here, which allows him to do an empty board at Pilot Destroyer. Right. Tavis, do you like the hold on the Lepernum? Um... Yeah, I think so. I mean, it would be three damage, basically, if, if he played it here. Um... I'm not sure. It's, it's a close call. It's easy to play later for quick shot, uh, so uh, it's not a problem to, to not play it. It's, it's a really close call. Wow. Yeah, it's just <laughs> playing with the explosive. Kibler has to know that his opponent's got... What about, the, um, what about the follow-up play? Do you prop the trap before you play Shredder? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kind of have to, I, yeah. I'd, I'd imagine. I mean, you're still not obligated to by any means. Because you'd be able to get, like, one extra knife for the raise? Well, I mean, you just you keep trading for whatever's on the board, you know, effectively. But I think he knows this is the face hunter, so he recognizes this is an opportunity for him to seize it. And having a lot of 1-1s... <laughs> Surprisingly, he's helpful against the face hunter because there's a lot of annoying. Like, say, if Wolf Rider was played here, then uh, he'd, he'd, he'd have to use Unleash the Hounds in order to get it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so Kibler being very a gentleman and just greeting that mm -hmm. uh, Huffer. Yeah. Huffer gonna do a lot of damage. Uh, he has his own un animal companion, and he also has his own Unleash to 
be able to answer as well. What to do? Thing about it is that you have to really just get ahead of the other hunter player, um, whether on board or on damage count. If you can get significant in one area, then uh, like this early on, you can definitely continue to push for the victory. Yeah, and the thing is, the high main that Kibler plays is an indication that he's probably playing a hybrid variant with a double Evernote. So it's a bit on the slower end, but he got a really good start against a phase hunter. Alright, uh, looks like our video is actually uh, stalled for a second, so just bear with us. We can't actually keep up with what's going on. I'm going to rejoin the call real quick. No, it's the screen sharing. Oh, okay, it's screen share. We don't know what's going on. Like, before, like, now we can kind of anticipate it, but Hunter is Hunter so fast. Thing is going for face. Oh, he's hero powering. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, looks like all three of us can't see the screen right now. That's a little bit yeah. unfortunate. Either way, um, I guess we're going to have to just rejoin the call real quick. Yeah. I'll be right back. All right. And looks like I am just going to hop directly into this. So it looks oh, like okay. we have we uh, frozen ice here. He's just... Oh no, he replayed his second explosive trap, and then Killer is now going to play his high main. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty dominant position, considering that he has kill command already. Oh yeah, even spell power for it, so he can deal 6. But on the life totals, uh, frozen ice is ahead quite a bit. So, could Frozen Ice be able to push for enough damage? Because the kill command is going to enable, like, I wonder if the Kobold Geomancer is going to be instrumental in winning this in any way, shape, or form. Just because of the extra damage it generates. It would be hilarious if it, if it ended up, like, this <laughs> game with the spell power. So he almost wants, I, I guess at this point he wants Misha. Although, what would Huffer do? So Huffer would give you 4, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, you'd still not be quite on lethal, and you couldn't justify that. So I guess Misha is still ultimately what he's looking for. Yeah. It's not a bad draw. It's a good one, yeah. I agree. You can weave it in with your hero power quite nicely. Misha Oh, we is... got it! Wow. Wow. And if he the wants to play around down. second unleash, he should kill off the 2-1 with his 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. yeah. It's a tough goal to make, though. How, how much, he, he, he has to think about how to set up lethal for next turn. So getting those two extra to the face might be a uh, difference. So he can, high main go space and hero bar, so that's 8. He can put him down to 15. With the kill command hero bar, he has 7. So if... Yeah. Uh, so if the if high main survives, survives with another minion... With an, it has to survive with another minion. No. If, yeah. it, if, it, if it makes the trade here. But it will, like it, the chances are high. But he, the trade would uh, would be better in this situation, but he, he obviously doesn't have access to the same information as we do. So the trade... I mean, he kind of he has to make the trade either way, just yeah, because of the it. possibility of the uh, the owl would also make this a bit awkward in the circumstance where he's got a bit more damage. Wow. I think that's it. Like, Kibler's gonna take it, because that's not enough to clear those minions, and the killer command is gonna be able to finish things off. So the hybrid hunter is gonna take it over the face hunter. And Kibler going... <laughs> 6-0. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. undefeated Kibler, what's up? Still undefeated. This is That's crazy. Amazing. Yeah. He's played Shaman twice and he hasn't lost a single game with it. Surely and that says Hunter something. As well. right? He's actually just sticking to his guns and yeah. allowing his specialties to really carry him through. But yeah. another story, too, that's coming here is another struggling day for Frozen Ice. At best, he can go even score. Um, yeah. And this is just Team Celestial still struggling here as 4-1 is the current count in favor of Value Town. Based on the score, it looks like I think Frozen Ice has been uh, the player was like I know Tiller had a really awkward first uh, first week, but I think Frozen Ice has had a, a tougher time over the course of the three weeks. And based on today, it looks like the trend is continuing. So it's not he's got to feel a little awkward about it, but because again, you know, this is a team league, so I mean, Savitra yeah. probably felt like that. You know, when when you feel like the weak link. It sucks. Like it's not that you yeah, are. It's, it's really just that it feels like that. When you like lose a tournament where you're just playing for yourself, it feels bad. Yeah. 
obviously. But when you play in a team league and you do bad, you feel bad for yourself and you feel bad for the other people. So it's like three times the the feels bad. Yeah. And well, hopefully yeah. he can equalize the score here. He's got a hunter to win with and the warlock. So I mean, he just has to win once with both of them to get uh, to get even and maybe uh, get himself and his team out of this little awkward of a spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We haven't um, seen Dietler play yet, have we? No, and he's got to win with both his decks as well. I mean, I think um, Dog is the only player who has to win on Value Town side, so the benching mm -hmm. rule doesn't apply to them anymore. But he's got to win two more games. And I think against yep. the entire lineup that he's going to be facing, I mean, if it's Freeze Mage, the Paladin should be bearable, and the Rogue Just should Paladin. also... Yeah. Like, both Jox decks are amazing against Silent Storm's Paladin. Exactly. Well, even if it comes down to it, it might be... Uh, even if they climb back on, it might be a struggle just to beat that one lineup from Dog. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, something like a Warrior here. Like, it should be do fine against both of those. Yeah, I'd like to see the warrior come out too. Um, we it's, it's important um, that Tiller be able to come out here. Hypothetically speaking, if Frozen Ice played again and lost, and then he got benched and Silence Room could play again, then Tiller could go throughout the entire day not playing a single game, which would be really unfortunate. Yeah, but his score wouldn't get any worse than it is. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's the silver lining. Wow. <laughs> Talk about a silver lining right there, Savis. I've never heard anything as depressing. <laughs> I That is some next level stuff right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would expect to see Diddler Warrior here. I'm going to call it Diddler Warrior. It's you, think, you think Rogue... I guess the Freeze Mage matchup makes up for the fact that I would, uh, uh, Rogue is kind of good. I mean, I think Rogue is really good against Patron, but... I wouldn't mind Frozen Ice playing it's Hunter again that, either. Yeah. I think Hunter would be great in a spot like this. Not really. um, yeah, I mean, actually, it's Space not Hunter that... against Freeze Mage is not. That. Yeah, I guess Freeze Mage. It depends a bit. Like, is there a heal bot, for example? And how, how, what are the starting hands lineup? It, it's, but it, well, I, would, I would favor the Freeze Mage for sure. Like, even without the heal bot, I would favor it. But if there's a heal bot, that makes it way better. It already it's is. just because I feel like Warriors have gotten much better at playing. Or, sorry, excuse me, the other way around. I feel like rogues have gotten much better at playing against Patron War than they did a month ago. So I, I feel like, true. you know, they they have better tools. They know how to time their flurries. They know what to save for. Um, now that unstable ghouls have become more popular, it's like they understand the capabilities and whatnot. So I think uh, it's really good that rogues been able to put on pressure too because warriors have gotten a little bit greedier like they don't have gromosh and dr boom anymore that like really gave rogue a hard time oh yeah um but nowadays it's more like you know the no mission venters and stuff and rogues can deal with those pretty easily yeah that's a big deal uh, it's um I, I hadn't even thought about it that way but then um, uh, dr boom used to be an, an auto include at some point in patron and mm -hmm. uh Everybody who has played Rogue <laughs> knows how painful Dr. Boom is to deal with. <laughs> yeah, that and Ragnaros, man. It feels so it's... bad when, when mm. any class plays it against you. Like, what do you do? You sap and then the Boom Bots <laughs> kill all your stuff. Yeah. Then they play it again. Then there's more Boom Bots. But if you soak 7 damage on it, how do you win? And the Boom Bots still kill your stuff. Yeah. So it's like... Right. Uh, it feels so bad. But now without it, without it it's, uh, it's a little bit more doable. But I still tend to favor the warrior a little bit the, because of the way that the, sure. how efficiently the the weapons can uh, remove all the rogue minions and uh, sometimes get those amazing card draws with all the battle rages and uh, and and uh, like the armor smiths and everything. I don't yeah, know. I can get behind that for sure. It, it divides opinions. I think Nairia has been uh, talking about it a lot that he he thinks that the uh, rogue beats it and he plays rogue really well. So I believe him on that. But if I was playing it the rogue, I would probably lose. So I haven't played Rogue that much lately. Yes! I called it! Good job, man. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Savis here with the calls is like super happy. I guess when you have to narrow it down to like one deck from both sides, where one deck, one side has like five decks to pick from, the call is actually really good. So, nicely good done, sir. And we can see the exact matchup that we were just talking about. It. How cool is that? We didn't know when we started talking about it. Yeah. Let's see how. I mean, Dog is one of the. F like, there's a few players who I I'd venture to say are like excellent at playing Rogue, um, and Dog is amongst those few. So it's kind of nice oh, yeah. to play that deck. I think Rogue is one of the decks with the highest skill uh, skill cap, so to say. Yeah. So I mean, many the skill floor even. Yeah. 
Like the, the most difficult part, in my opinion, is to is to know when to go aggressive, when to go for that oil and go for pace, when to prep offens offensively. Like the 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 transitioning from uh, from like board control to to the aggression mode is like. Uh, but I, I I always can't figure it out exactly when I'm playing rogue. Yeah, I think Hunter kind of operates the same way, that, where they can be like aggro control in a way. The thing is, the fact that Rogue has so many, you know, zero cost spells makes it so you really get to dictate when to switch on the aggression. And that's the trickiest part of it. Like, it doesn't play itself. Yeah. Pay attention. All right, first teacher coming out. Well, that's a really a good card right now. Yeah, this, that's, that's kind of. Compared to Piloted Shredder, it's not that great. Piloted Shredder would have worked out so much better. I wonder if he's playing two teachers and two Shredders or just... Wow. Uh, oh, that's a good pickup. Yeah. I mean, oh, the, th those two poor teachers aren't doing much. And the, the worst part is, if the Emperor Thorsten falls down, like, what, what does yeah. Dog have to really deal with it no, at the it's moment? Piece. I mean, it's like backstep oil, not something. Oh, that's also a good draw. He can attack and, and execute that teacher. I would expect to see the execute. You know, there's no way he can let it live with no whirlwind effects in his hand. Yeah, I think Dog's gonna have to pick up uh, deadly poison to do anything here. Yeah. I mean, the, the Tinker Sharp Sword all is really nice, but it might not be enough. And now the thing is, if Lotep is played for tempo, the Emperor Thorson kind of doesn't care. It yeah, kind of just that says, "I'm getting my effect it. off, and I'll do whatever I want later." Yeah, doesn't do anything. Like he's not casting any spells anyway. So in this trade-off, basically, Doc, Doc got a useless battle cry, and Fiddler is going to get a <laughs> one mana discount on all of his things. Yeah, Both I really like. Uh, I really love Lothab against Patient Warrior. I think it's one of the most underestimated deck cards against that deck because you would think that it doesn't affect them as much as it does other classes. But very often, I found it to be the case that you can slow them down just enough that you can get. Uh, you know, you you buy yourself enough time that you can get the win just because you play Lothab. Yeah, I completely agree with you, agree with you there. Uh, I, I think Lothab has, has been making some of the comeback. Like, it faded out a little bit. It's always been played in some decks, but right now, it at least to me, it feels like it really fits everywhere. It's so good. Even against Hunter, you can buy an extra turn where they can't kill command. It, it just uh, it buys so much time. It works against all the combo decks. It works against Freeze. It's like the, um, the best card against Freeze. It's even good against Hand, but they can't AoE. It's good against strong. It's just good against everything, and it's a five, five for five, even if it, the effect isn't useful in some situation. Yeah. Well, the uh, argument of the five, five for five is a good one. Ugh. No Look sprint. at that hand. This yeah. is where he was supposed to sprint. But where is it? <laughs> well, I guess it's waiting for oh. your opponents to play patrons, so then you kind of want to sprint, and then it's too late. Yeah. On so the flip does. side, uh, his opponent hasn't exactly been drawing a lot of cards. Either. Oh, well, that's, that's pretty helpful. That's a good pickup, yeah. yeah. But, but before that, his hand was looking rather thin. That's true. Like, he didn't have that much either. He does have the battle rage, but he also needs to enable it somehow to um, get good value. I, I don't think that's going to be too hard to do. It's just. No. He, could wait, he could really just wait one turn and do it with the, the patrons if he feels like it. He's got a yeah. lot of ways to flood the board, but when you can get that. that you know, that many patrons with a Warzone Commander, you're better off waiting for it. This is like a joke. Com compare this to draw to the, the one that Dog had last game with the double sprint. Now sprint would be the exact card that he would need. Like the last time his his hand's mana cost was, so was like 30 with 8 card draw. Yeah. And now it's <laughs> now it's like total 10 and no card draw. Okay. Hearthstone! <laughs> I don't even it know what It just kind of has. It's just what happens with draws, unfortunately. Yeah, in this yeah I mean, case. it's a card game. It, it can happen. Uh, so unfortunate. Picking up two sprints last time and no sprint this time. Do you think you just um, eliminate this and just play something on board, or? I don't even know. I guess he's going foil and then like agent in space, or I don't even. Yeah. Are you good agent first? Uh, this is so hard. You can still do no, it deadly poison. I'd uh, probably agent first. If I'm gonna play agent here, I'd probably agent first. Well, you can still get the battle cry. It's fine. Yeah, that's right. But I mean, you could buff it. Yeah, yeah you can make it. Might a have been worth it. Yeah, because the comparison is between getting three extra attack on the dust side, or getting two damage to face directly. It might oh. have been better. Rest oh, in my. peace. I cannot play his entire hand. 
The, actually, is he just dead? He's got 10 damage with two patrons and then an extra billion patrons spawning. I think he's just dead, uh, man. It's gonna be six <laughs> patrons, right? Yeah, yeah he's is dead. Five. There's six patrons, two of them deal five damage, four of them deal three. So that's exactly lethal. Exactly lethal, yeah. It's, it's exactly, exactly lethal. lethal. Yeah, that's, oh my uh, god, he's gonna miss it again. <laughs> <laughs> if he Don't misses it, it I am going to create Not a again, fund. Tiddler. I'm going to create a GoFund page, GoFundMe no. page for Tiddler. Yeah, well, like, he, has, he, he should he's be he's able to though, right? Yeah, yeah he's, I think he's, he, he's got to, he's got to. It's just worth counting because if you mess it up, then... Uh... <laughs> it's the rope. Well, oh yeah, my the god, the rope. He's from a different region. The so. rope, man, that's the true. rope. That's, that's, that might be an issue. Because he, he is playing from, uh, from China. Has he increased his APM since the last time we saw him? Oh my god, guys, a rope is going faster than I thought. No, come on, come on. His look face? At his, look at the facial impressions if we got it or not. I think he got them all. He increased his APM uh, like between the last ah, game. Ah, there it is. All right, the Tiddler APM is catching up, and Dog's gonna lose this one to a patron. I mean, that was a really good turn for Tiddler. It's just kind of the god, um, the god patron turn. Because very often I find you don't kill them with patrons. You, you kind of try to whittle them down, but you don't get the kill right away. Yeah, that's that's pretty rare to, like, to uh, see like that. <clears throat> frauding combos are much more uh, like common. Yeah, frauding warrior, not patron warrior. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the typical war song warrior, I think. That's like the key card. Let's be real. Like, what yeah, I think Warzone right, right. Commander is the core, because without it, like, none of those combos are really possible. Like, uh, you need then. to first, because without the Warzone, you have to first put your minions on the board, and then attack with them, but they're not going to live for a turn, like, no way. <laughs> yeah, I think Razor called it Math Warrior back in the day, because you just, you're Math. counting a lot. Yeah. yeah, you're counting a lot of little one, like, I, I think Naria came up with, like, the first super effective combo deck. Where, like, you really... I don't know if you came up with it or if you popularized it a bit by playing it in tournaments. But, like, the Worgen deck was basically the only combo warrior. And then it mm. kind of just didn't see any play forever. And now the patron's coming back. Somehow, Worgen is also coming back sometimes. I've seen a few people play that. Um, and it's been very, very surprising to people who end up facing it. Because they play around patrons, but not the OTKs. Uh, yeah, it's one of those decks that if you ladder and you're not streaming, you might be able to catch your opponent's off guard. And I think it's completely viable. Maybe not top tier, but the surprise factor from that Worgen Warrior can be enough to win games just because of your opponent's lack of knowledge. Yeah. Alright, well, Dog's got to pick up two more wins here. There's four four decks for Tiddler Celestial, uh, Team Celestial to win Tiddler, of course. Uh, I just don't know what they're going to queue into this. I don't really no. like... Well, I don't mind the hunter. I think yeah. the hunter here is fine. Yeah, I, I would have liked to see the hunter. That does fairly I, all right against both. Then it starts getting hard. Then it, you have to, you know, the ultimate question is, um, you know, can the paladin win, win yeah. versus these classes? <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, it's tough. But then you also have things like if Frozen Ice is playing Zoo, you know, is that going to get shut down by the Freeze Mage? Or if it's Handlock, will Dog find a way to kill it with Rogue? Um, or even what what does Tiddler bring with his mage too? Tiddler's a, a guy that's innovated mage a lot in the Chinese region. Like he's brought aggro mage a few times and really done some weird stuff with it. Or tempo mage bat before tempo mage really became a thing. He was playing like Frost Nova oh, with yeah. aggressive stuff. It was like yeah. really weird back in the day. Mad bomb. The ice ice blocks and lepernom and, and the pyroblast in the same Yeah, game. it was really what? funky, but I end up work, working for him and winning a you know a couple of really high profile matches. Yeah. Uh, can't really say what's for sure this time around. But I wonder if yeah, he'll bring out good. like a, if it's a freeze mage or a tempo mage from Tiddler. That's the one thing I'm kind of curious about because it looks like I've seen him play mostly aggressive decks a long time ago. But I know he's picked up. He's a lot more diverse about the way that he plays now. Um, yeah, for his sake, uh, I hope it's. Uh... It's a freeze mage because of the way that tempo mage struggles against uh, dog's freeze mage. I, I'm gonna call it dog is playing freeze mage. I'm, I'm yeah. I feel all certain about it because the, the tempo mage just having those meter entities in the deck. It's such a liability against doomsday. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know freeze mage is probably one of the best matchups. Even echo mage is one of the best matchups against freeze mage. Actually, we're gonna get to see that. It's the mirror match with the mages here, so we'll see exactly what those p uh, those players are playing. I'm I'm a little. 
curious about the the value of tempo mage very often it's kind of yeah, hard to play I mean, when everybody's playing freeze i think that that deck i haven't played it that much but i think uh the version with with mirror images and everything uh, which is the kind of the standard does quite quite all right against patrons because of the way that the mirror images work, work against the uh, weapons it's, it's like the worst feeling ever when you're playing the warrior and you have you're hitting a zero two taunts with your death spite yeah, it's like playing a shaman, but except he's getting stone claws all the time, and then you can't get to the actual minions that you want to get rid of. Yeah, and usually they've been casting for zero mana uh, with a sorcerer's apprentice, so it's uh, <laughs> it's really ridiculous. All right, all right. so dog's currently making his deck. <laughs> all right, I guess he <laughs> didn't have it built. Yeah, yeah, I guess uh, figuring out to make the optimize it. While we have a quick second, guys, uh, we want also want to. Uh, go ahead and remind you that to hashtag HTLC and let us know some of your predictions. I know a lot of people are cheering for uh, Team Value Town because they have a lot of fan favorites, but um, Team Celestial is you know, kind of like an, an ad admirable project in a way because Tiddler saw what uh, Amaz and Raynad were doing, and he even said in his interviews that he just wanted to create another like team centric or player centric team that's dedicated to Hearthstone and not just like another spin off of a a large organization that um, you know it gives them more of like a homey feeling because in China right. there's no teams like that at all. It's all like you know Vici Gaming or IG or you know DK and all this other stuff. Um, Tiddler wants to be one of those teams to be able to establish a Hearthstone franchise within the Chinese region. And I think it's really cool that he's embarking on that kind of journey because it's very hard. So go ahead and show your support when you can. Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. really awesome to have a have a have their team in the in the league too. It really spices things up because they have their the meta is different at Asia. I'm sure that they um they have at least watch a little bit of streams and like keep up with the Western meta. But uh, the Asian ladder and uh, the innovations might be might be different there, at least on some classes. Yeah, you've got a larger player pool also to draw from, I think. So you're you're bound to see something crop up that sometimes maybe a smaller player pool uh, would see. The thing is, like, as much as it might seem weird to say so to somebody who's played, you know, real card games, the metagame in Hearthstone switches so fast because of the way um, new decks are come up with so quickly. Like, the in the information gets disseminated really fast. And so whenever a streamer, let's say, or a pro player in a tournament event ends up, you know, piloting a deck to great success, it kind of becomes a fad for a while. Like, you'll see it crop up all over the place. And it affects the metagame inevitably. Very, very quickly you see people, like, one person can make a huge uh, impression on the meta. I think that's really cool. Yeah, that's right. So, and then uh, then when that deck gets more popular, then the other thing starts being more familiar. Oh my goodness. Look at this. <laughs> uh, well. All right. That's, wait, who's uh, playing what? Uh, I think I'm going to say it, dog's playing dog? freeze, man. I mean, that would be my guess, but... Um, yeah. I feel like Dog would be playing Freeze Mage. It's All the time, very yeah. out of character for him to play Tempo Mage. Oh yeah, the Dog is the Freeze, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah. Indeed, letter with that. Oh, he has a fast start. Yeah, he's got a pretty decent start. Maybe not. Oh, yeah. uh, the thing is, the Doomslayer makes all of the, all of this oh, irrelevant. <laughs> it's kind of oh, like gosh. he's got a fast start, but oh wait, yeah. Entity, and it doesn't matter anymore. Like it's. Like, the science this is just so bad. Yeah, Amaz was playing. Um, he was playing, I think, in the Star Ladder, he was playing a Tempo Mage, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And that ended up being its downfall. Because basically, any time he ended up playing it, and it was a, you know, a Doomsayer in the lineup, that was it. Like, the game was over. Well, it's such a disaster with that, um, with that Doomsayer. Whoa, 50-50. Oh, he got it. Yeah, I'm saving the coin for... Uh, I remember the, when there was a... Uh, an argument over whether or not it was a 50 50. Like yeah. early in Hearthstone life, we got like, like this know, huge isn't it? 60 question. Set or whatever, I don't know. Like, uh, Trump, yeah. has, Trump has, it still has an emote over it, like Trump, three out of seven. <laughs> 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 but it's 50 50. But like the, the flaw in the logic was that, uh, that the missiles might sometimes, like, um, how, how was that? They can, they can hit their face basically like more times or something. Yeah. I, I can't remember anymore. But it was like whether it's 50 50 or 3 out of 7. Like that was like the, the argument thing. I can't exactly 50, remember. 50. Oh, what a pick up there nice. with the dark in the leg. But he's not yeah. cast. oh, he's casting. I would expect him to. Yeah, he's gonna have to. I, I actually expected him to do that first, right? To draw first, but. 
Yeah, was there any real reason to play the the scientist first? Like, why 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 would you? No, he's play? already tested for secrets, and he's already gotten in like a strong inclination that this is uh that this is tempo ma or this is freeze mage, excuse me. Yeah. All right, uh, quite a oh wow. Let's... No, it's not the oh, best so to do because of uh, Doomsayer. Like when Mirror Enemy is on the is a possibility, Doomsayer becomes such a powerful card against his deck. Well, Gather, maybe he plays one counter spell. That might. Oh wow, what a pickup! Now he that has enough is... turn in his hand. He he can ignore ice barriers at this point. Yeah, he doesn't even have yes. to worry about it. Wow, that, wow. that was that was a huge draw. Healbot and that is the, like Healbot is basically that the might, card he's looking for. That might be game right there. He got enough damage in early, and it is he a can, counter spell. He can put Dog down to one, and there won't be necessarily uh, enough time for the um, Alexstrasza. He doesn't even have it in his hand yet. It might come down to whether or not Dog plays a Healbot. Yep. Yeah, I have to assume he kind of does very frequently. Is kind of what I expect from Freeze Mage nowadays because it gives you like 24 extra health between the Ice Barriers and the Healbot. It's big and the worst part is Dr. Boom is actually a problem because you can't wipe it off the board at all. Like, it's better than pinging next turn. Yeah. Like, it's... <laughs> this is hell. No, yeah, I wouldn't say it's better than pinging. <laughs> no. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily better than pinging because pinging allows you to pop the block and otherwise you Well, can't. actually, you play Dr. Boom, you win, man. That's it. Game over. Oh, that's true. That's true. Okay, this game right the, game, the game is done. That is game. Okay, I agree with you. Playing the Dr. Boom is better than pinging. No, wait, no, it's not. Because the Doom Sir. Get the oh, coffee, get the coffee. What oh, the man. hell is this hand? Uh, I don't even know Forget what to say. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah. So even if you heal bot here, you're yeah. almost dead. You need some ice block into Alex Straza now. Yep. Uh, I think that's, that's the, that's the one more draw, one more draw. Yeah. One more draw, commit Sudoku with that frost bolt. Even if he plays the heal, but he won't have enough mana to do it anymore. And he's gonna commit Sudoku with the frost bolt. No, he's not, okay. He's triggering the counter spell. <laughs> oh, he couldn't play not even No, yeah. not even. The rest about that. I don't even know what to say. This is probably the most unexpected win out of this entire... For, no. for me, it's close to the most unexpected. I guess Paladin would be more unexpected, but not by much. It's just that was, you know? Because Tiddler, Tiddler struggled a lot the first couple of weeks, but now today he went a decisive 2-0 and puts his team back into contention of the series. It's... 4-3 now. It's not as uh, one side as it was just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, and Dogs yeah, still really, on the ropes. Really, really wow. I mean, the, the draw was kind of incredible. He got so much value out of the first Sorcerer's Apprentice. Those early minions managed to deal enough damage so that those double Fireball Frostbolt to follow it up, it was enough. Because he never triggered even one on Ice Barrier. Ice Barrier is one of those key cards to stall. And um, having, having dealt enough before any barriers, just it didn't matter anymore. There's no yeah. no life gain, and Alex draws it too late. Hmm. I mean, he would have had to draw really, like really perfectly to get anything done. Because again, that that counter spell that came from the mad scientist. I mean, mm -hmm. that explains why Tiller ended up playing his uh, mirror entity from hand to guarantee that he could get something yeah. to deny his opponent the ability to swing back in the game. I mean, I'm I'm just surprised at how convincing the Tempo Mage win was because I rarely ever see that kind of stuff happen to Freeze Mage. Well, uh, I mean, it's kind of the victim of whatever uh, Sabiz was talking about—the draws there, the burn being able to get past the ice barrier. But you didn't even have ice barriers, so no, there's one of those things where you also Freeze Mage is one of the most consistent decks because it draws really early, um, and there's so many ways for you to stop the pressure. But in this case, it wasn't even like significant. The like pressure where he needed to drop frost nova early he felt like he could take his time and then uh his opponent just happened to draw into 15 points of damage you know yeah, yeah. and uh, on the other <laughs> hand like he also had the doctor boom he had a ragnaros so if he didn't have that burn i kind of feel like he might have been able to grind it out just with the rack too like still e even if he couldn't uh, do it so fast yeah it's yeah. such a problem because very often freeze mage does a run polymorph and they really have very few ways to handle a ragnaros mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we're talking about this, but it still will or possibly might come down to this Paladin from Soundstorm. Like, they have yeah. to play for Tiebreaker at the very least. Like, they really want to get those points, but... I mean, um, the series is still very much alive. 4-3 mm -hmm. is still anyone's game. It's like winning the first and the best of five from that point on. Um, yeah. Hunter and Warlock coming out here for Frozen Eyes would be excellent. 
and then you just give Pound as much chances as possible. This could easily turn the other way around. Even though you might feel like Team Celestial could be playing for tiebreakers, uh, they're also playing to win, and I think that's the approach you have to have. Yeah, and that's I mean, what they never, really need to do. Up. Yeah, never given. If if them, hmm. I never, yeah, I, I think that the, the rogue can be doable with the paladin, but can he beat the mage? Well, he can beat the mage with something else. No, wait, I'm. T- I mean, it, it depends here uh, how this is gonna ha- like how this matchup will go because yeah. very often I'd expect mage freeze mage to take it over face hunter, um, mm. but we've seen upsets. It has happened yeah. before, so there's definitely a possibility Frozen Eyes locks down another win for his team. Dog is very experienced with uh, with the freeze mage, so and he knows that it's a fa- face hunter. So if he adjusts his play accordingly, just basically to remove every minion, he not not necessarily to be mana efficient, just keep removing the minions. The, the face hunter doesn't have much sustained damage. And goes, against mid range, for example, uh, if there's a leper gnome on the board and you have three mana, you usually want to go for the arcane intellect. But against the face hunter, what you do is use this ping. You, you kill all the minions, you frost bolt, you fireball them, you just like, you kill, kill the minions and they won't have much. They have more burn and removal than they have minions. So I would expect Doc to take this down. All right, well. We'll see if it ends up being that case. Uh, we've been seeing some matchups, you know, even though it favors one person, the person that normally has the dominant percentage advantage ends up getting robbed because of a few awkward things of draws. Maybe the RNG pans out their way. Um, not, I'm not sure, though, because Dog has a pretty nice opening hand this time around. And we'll see if uh, Frozen Ice can follow up with his own aggressive line of play, too. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, pick up a Leper Gnome, nice. though, so... Yeah, no leper no. So, uh, well, I, hmm. it's already slower than he wanted to be. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> right. if we find out. <laughs> like it's turn one, it's already slower than he wants it to be. Like it, the, the game is too slow because he doesn't have a one drop. I actually wouldn't be surprised if we find out sign this here. Like it, quite often you don't want to do that, but um, it's it trades for whatever. Like he can deal with a juggler now. He can trade it with a with a scientist. Mm-hmm. Everything that's no played is very too. cautious. Yeah. So many weapons for, for Frozen Eyes. Yeah, two weapons, two scientists, and traps. How effective are they really against Freeze Mage? Uh, just late yeah, game. They don't, do uh, they don't do anything until like he drops Alex and tries to kill you. But then very often, nowadays, they don't attack with Alex, they just kill from the hand. A long time yeah. ago, it used to be the case that people would actually attack you with Alex, but that just doesn't happen anymore for some reason. Oh wow, that's a good card to get. Yep. Ice barrier so. is a key card in this matchup. Mm-hmm. Even to the point where people keep ice barrier in the hand if they get it against Space Hunter. I know Sixo was like one time coaching me about it. He's like, no, you should keep ice barrier for sure against Hunter. Yeah. I keep it every single time, knowing it's a Space Hunter. If I just queue up into a Hunter on, on ladder. And uh, I, I think that it might be maybe mid range. Then, uh, then it's not that good. But if you, when you have access to the information that it, it is guaranteed face under, I, I personally believe strongly that it is correct to keep the barrier. Yeah, you so- picked up the second one from the mad scientist as well. That is a really, it's it's better than ice block here. Like how how, how is the face under gonna deal that much damage? I don't know. Like, there's already 16 extra health to go through, just based on what he's found. And that doesn't account for a possible heal bot or Alex later in the game, so... Yeah. We'll see how this develops, oh, but... draw. That's so bad. Yeah, that's a dead First draw. Card in the deck. Makes the scientist, the second scientist dead. Like, he, he can even play it, and uh, the second scientist won't pull yep. out any. More life gain being pushed out, too. Scientist uh, trying to see if he can add some damage onto the board, but it seems like dogs should be able to stabilize relatively easily here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Yeah, this, uh, this is the Frostbolt turn, for sure. Like, you just stop the uh, Hunter on, on resource. Mm-hmm. There's oh, no man. reason to really, like, go for a big Doomsayer Frost Nova or anything. Just don't take that extra 4 damage or whatever from the Scientist, uh, from the Juggler. What's also pretty amusing, too, is that Owl is usually very good against Freeze Mage to silence it. Um, but most of the damage that you want to do is is rarely repetitive damage, because Freeze Mage, as soon as you attack it once, it should be able to deal with your board. And nothing will really survive a blizzard, you know? Um, 
the Frost Nova yeah. might be useful, but then you have to even have minions to start with, and Frozen Ice doesn't even have anything at the moment. So th this is just really poor for Frozen Ice. And I feel like his Hunter games have always been kind of like this, um, that he's just drawing very awkwardly every single time. Yeah, uh, this was. I, I think this might be kind of interesting. So uh, against uh, when you're playing uh, with us face hunter, I think it's often better to silence the <clears throat> the scientist than it is to silence the doomsayer. Like, uh, I guess uh, like that's like the normal play to do. You keep a silence for a doomsayer, but I, I think it, it's often better to whenever the, the doomsayer is uh, like dropped to just. Uh, Depending on how much stuff you have on the board, obviously, but you just maybe go face because you know that your stuff is gonna die anyway. Yeah, instead of healing him for seven um, by attacking yeah. into it, you just hit him for seven, and then he has to find healing elsewhere while you just keep punching face with chargers and hero power. Yeah, just like play a charge and let it die, <laughs> kind of like that line. Yeah, it's a great point. It's a great point, actually. That is the oh. second barrier. Um, well, here, here, here it's getting silenced for sure. Yeah, there's no point there's like in both uh, there's, nothing else it else to, there's nothing else to play, there's nothing else to silence. <clears throat> that barrier, though, again, gonna basically cancel out this turn attack. He's gonna go to 30 health Shit. this turn, which is pretty awesome. Wow. Yeah, that's not what Frozen Ice wants to see. He's like, if this is an ice block, I can probably push in for enough damage to at least pop in and maybe, you know, avoid the second one. But this being a second ice barrier really makes it difficult on the face hunter. Yeah, I mean, Dog and Blizzard here and Frozen Ice's hand is completely dead. He, he can unleash for one dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like, what, what, what did you do? Uh, this is beautiful. Unleash for one dog. <laughs> Unleash the hound. <laughs> this is it. Hound. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you have to em put emphasis on the last. Literally worse than Stone Toes. Uh, uh, Literally worse. Yeah. Well, it's a spell, so I guess it doesn't trigger my entity. Okay, now we're starting <laughs> to get somewhere. <laughs> oh, we're gonna do it, man. That explosive trap is denying. Oh yeah. The oh my God, it's trolling so hard. <laughs> you want to cycle that quick shot? Wait, you can't. Yeah, but it's still it's still it's damage, bad. I guess. There's, yeah. there's worse draws, I suppose. <laughs> I guess if you play Zacolite of Pain and then attack to get a card draw, you can always get rid of the first draw. Oh man, what? <laughs> Might as well. I have they, never they, seen this in my life. Like, this is one of those games, if, you're, if he was playing ladder, I think he would just go see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, certainly if his opponent drops, like, Antonidas here. You require my <laughs> <laughs> For dog is like, how does he win but this? But hey, I don't now think the uh, explosive trap number two might be able to come to play. Yeah, he's gonna mm -hmm. unleash two doggies, that's pretty good. For oh, yeah. Z. Just play with Antonidas, giving more extra doggies. <laughs> you know, there's value to be found here, look at this. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, really good here. All right. Well, that's that. And he still has a sort of Morgan infiltrator left and done. <laughs> there goes his chance of popping the uh, explosive trap. Well, and for Thorson, it's just it's nice to produce the crossbow. Yeah. Okay. No beast, though. Still can't kill a Thorson, but now maybe the Explosive Trap can add some damage in. Mm hmm Allows him to play the second one, too. That's pretty sweet. So, if I see a Blizzard for that one Worgen Infiltrator... Yeah, it's, it's not impossible. He, he could. Yeah, I, I would actually enjoy it. I would just enjoy it. it. Yeah, I, I just enjoy oh, it. It's oh, better than like Frost Nova, I think, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Or Ice Block. Oh yeah, yeah, I think you can uh, ice block from the scientist because both of the barriers are gone, so he, can, he right. can't ice block here. Oh, you're right. He's actually better off doing Nova. Mm -hmm. hmm. <laughs> might, might seem excessive to some people, like why are you are you playing Frost Nova? But there's no use for it. Yeah. Doesn't this doesn't this guarantee lethal next time? Oh, okay. Okay. freezing a potential weapon. That makes sense. Like too. Questioning whether or not the bow was a bigger threat than. The Worgen. I think he came up with the conclusion that yes, it. Whoa! Oh, hold on, boys. That's a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Yeah, it is. Oh enough. wait, wait, wait! I damage. think he just gave him lethal. Oh no, no, because of the explosive trap. Excuse me, forgot. And the explosive just there. 
the, the first ice block is at least gonna be triggered right away. Oh. Okay. And he's gonna well, get the his... Emperor is gonna connect to phase for five. That's actually a big deal as well. Yes. He could pick up a frost bolt or an ice. Oh, double wow. ice. How much is that? That's uh, it, I think. Double split, ice. Yeah. Oh no, he's gonna be. No, he doesn't have an sure. activator for with the frost bolt. Yeah. yeah. So he got the frost bolt last time. So you go for it. Just freeze the face. <laughs> sure, you can double ice lunge. Yeah, just... why not? This is such a one-sided game. Even though it's like, you know that it's seven health. It's like it really isn't close unless frozen I ice like Hunter. magically got quick Def shot into like Kazan Mystic. That's like the only way you could have actually done it. He's gonna pop uh, the Emperor and hope he lives. <laughs> <laughs> he should have tried because it could have been a, uh, uh, yeah, uh, a duplicate. Duplicate, yes. Yeah. 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 No, it's cool. <laughs> could it? Didn't he kill anything before? Uh, yeah, he killed the end. No, 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 that was before it. Um, no, he could, it could have been duplicate, yes. Yeah. Could have been vaporized, man. <laughs> Better believe it. Chances. Of course. Well, yep, Dog maybe. locks the win with the mage, so at least that's out of the way for him. But now he's got to go against this phase hunter with his rogue. Uh, there's only one more win for uh, you know Value Town to pick up here, so it's pretty close. But Dog still has to go through a few matchups still. Yeah, pretty important that they grab this win too, because um, now you give Rogue more chances to win, and you know it's it's not exactly great against Face Hunter, and I expect Frozen Ice to queue this up again, but. Um, you know, the fact is, the earlier you can get the wins, the better, for sure. So you give more chances yeah. for your weakest deck to be able to do it. Because Freeze Mage is a, is a stronger deck in Conquest overall than Rogue is. I'd be shocked if we didn't see the Face Hunter in the next game against the Rogue. Because the Face Hunter, it's, it's extremely good. Like, the Rogue is just too slow. So you can't zap, you can't sprint. Like, all those cards are, are, are too slow. And I, unless Doc was running heal, but which I don't think was the case. It might be. I think uh, he does. In fact, I'd actually go ahead and say he runs two heal bots. That's what Dog. Whoa! Whoa! Really? Dog's rogue okay. deck is pretty well known. I think he runs two heal bots. Um, All right. Maybe oh, they've wait, been working yeah. on. Oh, interesting. I think there's one. I I've tried some of his rogue decks, so there there's probably one. Uh, but um, even with that heal, but it's still really tricky. Okay. We'll see. Cool. If you run two heals, but heal bots, though, that gives him a lot more. Maneuverability around face hunter, mm -hmm. like that's a really big deal. Yeah, it is. And um, sometimes it, it might give you that extra turn. The way for Rogue to win is to uh, is to prep an oil early and just like get, uh, basically outrace them. But how do you outrace yeah. with uh, turn one Lepernome? <laughs> you know what Reyna once said: Lepernome is what stands is a card that stands against every single principle that the Hearthstone embraces. Um, mm -hmm. Or so I'm paraphrasing, perhaps, but. I remember the, those words from him. I thought, I thought he said Lepernome stands against every principle of being a decent human being. I think yeah, it might, might be exactly that. It might have been. Well, I mean, at this point, Frozen Ice is being, you know, oh, half the human being he could be, and about to become a quarter of it if he plays that second one. Okay, keeps it on. Going for the fan value. Yeah, I think yeah, you have to silence your own Lepernome. Silence your own Lepernome. <laughs> Oh man, oh, he's that is the um, It's a statement. I think Hero Power is better. Yeah, I, mean, I like I Hero that, Power too. We also know that there's a there's a fan of knives, but uh, kind of maximize the, the Hero Power here. And the mana cost of his hand is so low overall <clears throat> that uh, it's... Uh, oh, there's, there's the first deal, but... Yeah. Well, if you want to put a bet that there's a second deal, by I, I, you know what? I listened to you, Frodan. I didn't actually ask Dog what his list was, and I believe you. Right. I'm not I, buying just yet. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm just... Uh, so we just too skeptical. Yeah, maybe I'm just like looking too much into the past. Dog could have innovated with the times. But the two heal bots would open up a lot. Mm -hmm. Speaking mm -hmm. of uh, opening up, um, Frozen Ice want, is thinking about whether or not he should attack here. And... The weapon gives him a lot of flexibility to deal with really annoying minions. That would be Yeah, he can remove a 3-3 three, three now. Or actually, oh, he can even bunch that if he wants to. But that's not face, so I don't know. Yeah. If you hit that... Hmm. 
No. No, he must have been expecting <laughs> the um the three drop, like an earthling farce here. Right. On three instead of a coin vile teacher. But then again, he still has the explosive trap to deal with it, right? Like you just attack into it, then you set it up so it dies when it attacks you. Or when the yeah. rogue attacks. So mm-hmm. it's not bad. Well, you can this, even this, even hero powers. It seems like a good play to hit that and explosive trap, but uh, then you're not going for phase. <laughs> you know what? I, I mean, it sounds I, I like agree, an man. <laughs> no, you're right. You're, 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 you're right, man. You're right. You're, you're absolutely right. Oh, God. I don't even know what to say anymore. I don't want to live on this planet. You're going to hold just for the chance of uh, you know, the freezing trap, but that's not going to be the case at all. Yeah. One thing that I do want to say is Lothev also introduces a really powerful opportunity for a rogue to come back to. Um, assuming that they have no charges and they just are holding kill commands. Yeah, Lothev is pretty good. Well, that's the oil. Uh, the oh. prep oil. I think that's the best way for a. Uh, yeah, for the, this is for looking the really powerful. But the, the teacher still messes things up because the oil might land on a 1 1 and I don't know. We uh, probably can't even do it here. It's just Lothev, yeah. It's yeah, kind of commonly yeah. accepted that that's it's a liability a in many many cases. Okay. A lot of damage in the next couple of turns. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can be played. It's... yeah. Five, six, eleven, twelve, uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Oh yeah. wow, that's a great That's card. pretty huge. But it's actually good for dog as well. And he, but really he have has um, he has the antique heal bot. Is yeah. it, how much is this if he picks up a uh, flurry? Okay, so he's got 12, 16, 18. Uh, He would be too short off lethal, I believe. Okay. Well, let's see how much the unleash is going to get done. Doc probably... Will he play around it? Hmm. How much can he play around it, unleash? He could stop the leper now. I I would really love to see that. Yeah, you kind of have to. Just because that death rattle alone is... Like, just the fact that it's an arcane shot right now is a problem to you. And what else are you supposed to do with that? With the zap, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in this matchup, pretty much nothing, because you're going to just send back a charger. But now the, the Unleashed dealing 5 puts him on 7. The bow deals an Unleashed. additional 3. Uh, he, 2 more damage is lethal. Oh my oh. god. Oh, that should do it. Unless he's really, oh, really unlucky. He's, it has he to hit. hit. Two knives. Oh, two two knives to the face. face. Oh, two knives. I don't know. One to the oh, face. One. I guess on average it only hits once. One more. In this one more. Oh man. Oh, Those two last game. hits. Oh. No, one more chance. Come on. No. Oh. Dog, dog is alive. Wait, wait, I'm wait, sure wait. even he this, can't believe it. How does he do this? Um, uh, he has he, to kill... He has to kill every everything? Yeah, everything, kind of. Yeah, because Except... the oil is the biggest threat, but how do you kill everything? Mm. Number one, you can't sound self the teacher. That's the first thing people need to stop doing <laughs> when you're at this point. You, you don't sound self the teacher here, because you're giving him a guaranteed oil. You want a hero power. Uh-huh. Yeah, if you do anything, it's killing it, but... How much is he training for? If he doesn't he train kill... for at least a teacher, then oh my uh, God. there's a chance for him to die. So this, uh, the eight oil. on the boat. Well, that could... Depends where the oil lands. Uh, doesn't matter anymore? Doesn't the matter anymore. That's it. Yeah, there it is. That does it. There's four from the weapon and two from the ass side, regardless of where the where the oil wow. goes. Wow. Okay, that was you a really close ending. Yeah. That juggler, man. That juggler. So crazy end. Here, if he hit one more juggle on the face, it would have died. Ooh, it's the face. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Place. Wow. Oh, he should have BM'd himself and SI'd his own face. <laughs> that was a new BM meta. Look, I'll do what your knife drugger couldn't hit my face. <laughs> <laughs> Sending a message right there to the hunter. Right. Uh, that reminds me of that hunter who actually played Misdirection and hit himself in the face back in the days. And it said something like, no face is safe. <laughs> oh. Guys, uh, Frozen Ice loses four games with Hunter today. He lost against the Warlock from Trump, the Hunter Mirror, and then you just saw him draw the last two games against Freeze yeah. Mage and Rogue. Um, that's didn't play his Warlock at all. Yeah, that's that's room for 
probably reconsideration because I think Frozen Ice has brought Face Hunter a lot over the past couple weeks, and it's definitely been one of his least successful decks. Um, you know, and of course, every control player collectively around the world danced out in praise and rejoicing. So, of course, that that will wrap up the series, guys. The recap six to three as we started off really strong with two wins from Trump, uh, followed by a nice couple of wins from Kibler with a cameo by Silent Storm. Uh, and then from that point on, it looked really bleak. Tiddler was able to turn around a couple of games, but Dog ended up closing out the series, wrapping up the day two and three. Uh, and that, that'll that conclude it. Guys, do you have any final thoughts about how today went? Starting with you, Noxious. Um, yeah, I mean, this is another loss for the team, for team Celestial, so they've got to feel a little awkward about you know going forward in the league. Um, again, Frozen Ice on a bad run overall. It's not that he's a poor player in any way, but it's just on a, a really awkward run at this point. Maybe bringing a less and unstable decks like Hunter, maybe Face Hunter would uh, would do a lot because although it's an amazing class, I think the archetype is very volatile, and in a format like this one, that's one of the few things you can't afford. So we'll see. I'm just happy to see Kibler still undefeated. We'll see exactly yeah, how that keeps going next week. Undefeated player. There's a five thousand dollar bonus for the best performing player, and Gibbler is he's hunting for it. Whether it's going to be the most consistent through uh, by the record, or maybe he doesn't lose a game ever. That'd be pretty cool and epic indeed. So, thanks for so much for stopping by. Do you have any uh, comments as we're looking at the standings here? Nylum uh, undefeated. A couple teams there uh, struggle uh, being able to fight for the the spot, but the struggling team here is Celestial. Um, not not really. Like I really enjoyed the games today. I think both of the matches were amazing, especially the the first one, the clutch five six, where um, Zale looked dead, and I don't think there's a heal shield block in there, and then he draws a shield block, yeah. goes back up <laughs> against the face hunter. It was just incredible stuff. So I really uh, like for those who just tuned in, I recommend the rebroadcast. I think uh, the first match was was uh, mm -hmm. may maybe maybe a, a tiny bit even more exciting than the second one. Gotcha, gotcha. For those who are curious about the, the score, that's how many wins that they get um, on top of their series score. So for those who lose, or say they're like three and four at the end of the se at the end of the season, uh, but they have you know like twenty five tiebreaker score, which is higher than twenty, then they'll be the ones counting higher than their opponents. Yeah. And the event of that being a tie, the head to head score with the team that they're tied with will be the deciding factor. Before we go, we also want to thank. Uh, the sponsors that make this possible. So shout out to Alpha Draft um, for being able to help uh, hop on board with us. Make sure to check out their website, alphadraft.com, for drafting your fantasy um, for the ATLC. You can sign up today for a $250 matching deposit bonus and get started on your draft. Again, alphadraft.com. And one more final shout out to the Amazon App Store. We're doing a promotion. We're doing a giveaway for some gift cards where you can get $25 in addition to the $25 you spend. Uh, Amazon will basically double up on the money you spend to buy more packs. And through the Amazon App Store, really easy and convenient, and you save a bunch of money. Uh, we want to also let you know that deck list will be online at Team Archon's website. You can check it out for the this week as well as the following weeks. Again, teamarchon.com. And the last thing we want to announce, I know it's been a lot that I'm talking about, I'll shut up after this, is that <laughs> next week we're going to be doing Tuesday for week four's broadcast. This isn't to be around Blizzard's announcement on July 22nd, which is happening in San Francisco. I'll be there, and uh, I'll also be casting a little bit next week as well. Yeah. All right, cool. so uh, final words. Noxious, go ahead. Um, no final words, really. I don't really have anything to promote at the moment, so... Yeah, I mean, thanks for watching. All right, Savits. Yeah, no, thanks for watching and thanks uh, to Archon League for like having having me cast. Uh, shout out to Force and Poison and Value Town. Like those who doubted those teams, I mean, they might have might have, might have to reconsider. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> they're doing really well, and we'll get to see him have another opportunity to prove themselves once more next week here on the Archon Team League Championships. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the follow button on the channel, and we'll see you guys next time. Have a good night.